<laughs> so the first thing I ask on this show, and this is so funny, is I ask the guest if we're friends. <laughs> The first thing I say is, and are I, we friends? And I tear up. <laughs> we are best friends. And it's going on 20 years. I mean, truly. 20 years. We are so We're old. so close that this is actually kind of awkward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were talking yesterday, texting yesterday. We were reminiscing with Dory, uh-huh. um, our like 30 and um, third, third e, best not friend, 30. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I was like, oh, remember the first time we saw each other naked? <laughs> <laughs> and now every year it looks a little different. So every time we see each other naked, it's, uh, it's like a new time. Uh, but so I don't even know how to convey how close we are i mean we met when how old was i 22 you're 22 you were forever 22 in my eyes by the way <laughs> but somehow you're aging backwards so I, I was benjamin like what are you button? eating i know i'm no, totally it's, benjamin button wait it's insane well when you met me no i offense. was like i don't mean that no like, it's bad like, about con- like, you're yeah. like you used to look very old <laughs> we used to <laughs> we used to make you show us your driver's license <laughs> <laughs> which was expired, which you paid for <laughs> okay, to get right. it reinstated. <laughs> that's right. You had some tickets. <laughs> I remember when I was like 25, I got in a car accident and uh, I called our third friend Dory at work and called both of you. You had to come get me and you're like, hey, we just need a driver's license. And I was like, and you're like, you don't have it, right? And I was like, no. And we go down to the DMV and I had $800 worth of mm-hmm. parking tickets mm-hmm. and you guys mm-hmm. paid for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's all good. We're here Why now. Why are you friends with me? <laughs> and then, and, but, and, well, we were, we were, I think, when did we all become ice in each other's phones? Like, there, oh, there was like, do you no, remember? Yes. Do you really want to do this? Yeah, because I remember, no, because it's that we've grown. Okay, so I was, okay, so we met when I was probably 22. Yes. I was s- broke and crazy. And the story of us meeting is nuts. And Can by the way, now I'm just story? rich and crazy. Can I tell that story? Yes, of please. Meeting? Okay. <laughs> So I worked with an actor mm-hmm. on a movie. Right. And he, he's he's one of the Scuzzy. only actors <laughs> I've ever worked with that I truly disdain. <laughs> he was not a good human so being. So of course I was dating him. <laughs> no. But that was the thing. So I he used to talk about this model that he was if my mom hears this, I better say something else. <laughs> she will be listening, seeing. by the way. He was seeing a model. <laughs> and he would brag about this often. Okay, so I was... Cut to the movie ends, and this this actor is out of my life. We never became friends. And I am at uh, the Red Lobster <laughs> on La Brea having some garlic cheese biscuits. <laughs> and why you were at the Red Lobster having some garlic cheese biscuits no, with that actor. I was anorexic at the time, so I was not having yeah. any biscuits. But why were we at Red Lobster? Was this a thing? The La Brea Red Lobster in the, <laughs> what, in the early 2000s? It must have been 2005. So yeah. I was with this guy who fully had a girlfriend oh, that yeah. was not me. Oh, yeah. That I did not know till later, um, who would, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, <sighs> Who fully would come on my back and lick it off? No, uh, <laughs> no, no. Well, that's not surprising. By the way, seriously, could me to the shit out of this guy. Hundred percent. I mean, the I things just, that I went through on that set that I now recognize were absolutely and inic- were, were like sexual assault. And I wouldn't because I just things. don't want him in my Google searches. Yeah. Just don't want. Yeah, no. And people would be like, who? <laughs> yeah, no, I want. I, I mean, we will stay silent because we just want to erase that. Yeah, just like that period. yuckster. I think I said a disdain. Is disdain also a verb? Disdain. I disdain. I, disdain, I despise. Yes. Yeah, anyway, I'm despise. disgusted by. Yeah. He's despicable. I'm yes. despicable by. Yeah. And he apparently despicable all over your back so- and shit. <laughs> <laughs> who knew? Wait, so you Does were. Did your publicist know you're doing this? <laughs> so, so we were. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that keeps going through my mind is my mother and my grandmother. But um, so wait, so we I was at yes, you were seeing this guy. He would brag about you, by the way, while also ha- he had a girlfriend and he was doing horrible things with an underage stand-in when we were on location shooting this. Right. Film. Yes. Therefore, this is my type of guy uh, <laughs> in my early twenties. This is what I would call a dreamboat. But apparently, a, a good choice that he made in life was seeing you well, and going to Red Lobsters. I'm trying to think how I think I met him at Val Kilmer's house. Well, there you go. Uh, so, 
<laughs> and um and we were hanging out and he would always name drop and try to like Ugh. impress me with celebrities and he was like oh Jennifer Goodwin and another act yeah we'll actor keep the others out yeah who wasn't famous at the time are at Red Lobster and I remember being like Hollywood is so weird oh that's wait he came there wait, wait like I didn't me. know it was two show okay so. So I don't and even then I know how up, he knew was I was like, there. And then I'm like, okay. because of the person I was sitting with, by the way. It, that might have been how he knew that we were there. But you also were in a movie, but you were in Mona Lisa Smile by then. Yes. And Witta Tate with Dad yeah. Hamilton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, but so this so was you, after the movie I'd done with The Despicable. And I was like, why are movie stars at Red Lobster? Well, like, we were at Red <laughs> The garlic cheese biscuits were really good. <laughs> I'm so so I don't know. So then I wonder if he, anyways. So you guys came into Red Lobster and I remember he came over and he said, hey, do you want it? Because I was not, he was not there with us. And um, and he said, hey, you want to see that that uh, model I'm despicking all over? <laughs> and I said, Sure. Sure. I would love to meet this model that I have heard so much about. So you guys came over and sat down and I fell so head over heels in love with you and I was so confused. And then Dory and I were at the like in style. Well, I remember I met you, you know, when you're in a bad relationship and you meet a cool girl, but but. You're like, oh, I'm never gonna be able to be friends with her because she thinks I'm like, because <laughs> you were with that she, guy. Yes, yeah. I was like, oh god, she's so awesome, but we're never gonna be able to be friends Aww. because I'm with this like, you know, um, dude. So, and then I remember because you were wearing, I know all of, I can literally name what you were wearing and truly every story. You had this like, like baby blue pea coat with a couple brooches on oh, the yeah, side there was a from like, here, from like yeah. anthropology. Yeah, it sure was. You had a lot of like oh, yeah. anthropology oh, pea yeah. coats oh, back yeah. then. Oh, yeah, and brooches from also anthropology. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you were wearing that little pea coat and you were just like so down to earth and so cool. And I was like, oh, I want to be her friend so bad, but she'll never be friends with me because she thinks that I'm like associated with this guy. Which and I'm were. only with him because I had a bad childhood. Aww. I don't like him. <laughs> well, thank God. You yes. were because then we were at like, oh, it was like a Oscar party or Golden Globe this party. This was an Oscar party that I had no business being at. I ended up fumbling into an Oscar party, uh, walked in. You were wearing white pants and a black top and black Jimmy Choo strappy heels. Oh my God, heels. somebody must have actually dressed me. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> but that is, I would have owned heels. Even I didn't know I anything. I would have owned high heels. You were wearing like white slacks from like Arden B. Oh, it was like right. Oh no, then I think those were mine. I probably borrowed the shoes from Dory. It was like right before you got a stylist. Yeah, it was before like all this intervention. Yeah, I was like, is that stylist. made well? You're you in a like movie. Pull me yeah, aside and be like, <laughs> you can't just shop at Goodwill and then come to Oscar parties. And I was like, I can't. Um, and I saw you, and I like ran up to you, like Mama. Like well, I, I said to Dory, I was like, that, that's her. That, and so we blatantly cornered you mm. and asked you, like, what the <laughs> you're F like, do are you need you? help? Blink twice yeah, if you've been yeah. kidnapped. <laughs> yeah, like, do you want out of that and into this? And then, and, and I truly, after that, we, I got your number, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I got you and Dory's number, and you're like, we should hang out sometime. Yeah, and, and like, you should never hang out with that guy again. Yeah, I try but you should hang out with us. And then. Uh, you know, normally when you get someone's number, you're like, oh, here's my number. And you like maybe text a month later and kind of just like fade away. They left and I called That's you guys. <laughs> they left and 10 minutes later I called. It was like, That's hey, where right. are you guys? That's right. And that was and it. And the rest is history. That was it. This is like 20 years ago. But why did you, why did you stay friends with me? I was so crazy back then. Wait, not only, wait, we had to make you though stay friends with us. <laughs> Do you remember? There's been a lot. There's been, not not in recent years, but there was a lot of nope. <laughs> you are not allowed to push us away. We are not going anywhere. <laughs> and to the extent that at your 30th, was it your 30th birthday at the Chateau? Yes. Okay, that's nuts. Yes. Okay, so it was at your 30th this birthday. This is the, my birthday when um, I dragged Ginny into a hotel room and I don't have any secrets from Ginny and it was driving me so crazy <laughs> that I had a secret from her. <laughs> so I dragged her into a hotel room and took my shirt off and I was like, I got fake boobs. <laughs> And I was like, yes, I know, because I know what you I know what you look like in a t-shirt. <laughs> I thought I was like hiding it from you. I'm like, I have to tell you something. You're like, I know. And you suddenly grew boobs overnight. But yes. But I but the thing is I remember Dory and I were laughing that we all of these people that we met that have come in different, you know, phases of your life have, yeah. have come together and, and stuck, you know, with you. Um, we were always the ones to whom they would say, oh, you're the old friends. And we we're like, we're the ones she's had the longest. You don't have to call us old, <laughs> but 
<laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go with we're the ones she's at. I mean, the, the originals, the yeah. classics, yeah. The, yeah. the vintage <laughs> yeah. friends, yeah, the, vintage the OG, couture, the OG. Thank you, but yes. But I do remember you've changed my life in so many ways, and anyone that's read uh, my book knows uh, Ginny under the fake name of my book, <laughs> Jenny. <laughs> Which did make me happy when you told me you were doing that. I was like, don't worry, I'm changing your name. It's Jenny. No one will ever know. I love it. I love it. You could have put Jenny. And uh, I didn't even change Dory's name. I was just literally just Dory. Um, And so uh, you changed my life in so many ways. And I think you know this. I'm not even sure you know this. Do you remember when you and um, Dory sent me a chastising email after New Year's? That I I left a New Year's Eve show early or uh, dinner early to go do stand-up? Was this here or was this in New York? This was here. And you guys sent me an email I being like, remember. you need to show up more as a friend. <gasps> I was being really flaky. I was in bad relationships. I was like running around, like cheating. And just like, I was just a mess. And I was like not putting my friendships first because I was so focused on making it as, as a stand-up. Remember, I would do stand-up like every night. I would oh, I leave know. dinner and I come know. back. Oh, I know. I know. And you sent me an email. And go- we went to as many shows as we could with. You went to my first stand-up show ever. Oh, yeah, we were scared. We were so scared. We were like, "What?" I think. I mean, do you remember we tried to have interventions with you? We, we were. We were like, "Wait, you're funny, <laughs> but do you understand?" But in like a sad people, way. People who stand on stage with a microphone. <laughs> Maybe we should look at other things. <laughs> what, when you're a little girl, what did you want to be when you grew up? <laughs> you knew me before I ever did stand-up. Oh yeah. Do you remember when I was like, "I'm going to try stand-up"? Oh yeah, no, we were terrified. <laughs> think you're funny but uh we were, we're gonna save you from yourself here we're usually laughing at you because we're drunk yeah. these these aren't real laughs by the way we've had like i feel like there have been you have proved us wrong i don't know why you're friends with us like <laughs> you've proved us wrong time and time again like when you bought your last house do you remember dory and i were like should we talk about <laughs> you're, you're buying this big beautiful house and then you sold three shows like the next week by the way and then do you remember we went to a place called M Bar? Oh yeah. I, didn't we we then had a birthday party there? Which you start at. We made a lot of mistakes you, at that. You start at that I, birthday party. Well, no, even on Ginny, the whenever Ginny and Dory uh have birthdays, I have we're a couple weeks apart. I have to insert myself because I feel such FOMO and I feel so left out. So we would have just like three person birthday parties. Yeah. I mean, like my name would be on yeah, the invite. Yeah. <laughs> and your picture sometimes friends. So <laughs> starring Whitney. No reason. <laughs> yeah. Um I did stand up. I remember it. It's gonna make me cry actually if I think about it for too long. I went on stage, told a story about dating or something. Mm-hmm. And I, after I got off, I did well. My first set, I actually did well. And then I bombed for like years after that. But my not. first time on stage. No, you were, yeah. Normally it's the first time on stage for people's a disaster. And then they, char- you know, get better and better. For some reason, I just got, there was some magical thing that night. Maybe it's because you guys were there supporting me or who knows. I remember my dad was there. And then yeah, I came off stage and you grabbed me and like pulled me to the ground behind a booth. And we're just like, are you me tooing me right yeah. now? <laughs> <laughs> and I felt triggered and unsafe. Uh, yeah, so and sorry. Ronan Farrow, I would like to make a claim. <laughs> and um, you grabbed me and you pulled me to the ground and you were like so giddy and you were laughing and you were so like relieved that I... <laughs> <laughs> you were so relieved. It's like you know when but you watch. I'm so scared for you. It's like when you watch it, I see me watching my kids. Like do like I sobbed through Oliver's first Christmas pageant this year <laughs> because I he's always been terrified on stage, mm. and that like instills. I mean, not that you were terrified, but well, no. Yeah. I mean, it's that's a normal, healthy reaction to be terrified to yes. perform in front of the people. But the fact that I invited all my friends to my first stand-up show, I mean, that could have gone south. Yeah. And you were so happy for me. And I just, I, that was the first time in my life I had really been around women and especially friends that were actually happy f- when I won. Whoa. You know, sometimes people are secretly rooting for you to fail or sure. secretly sort of like to be around people, you know, that make sure. them feel better about themselves. Sure. And I remember you being so happy for me. And that was such a big part of why I kept going. <gasps> I didn't know that. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm so glad then. I've also ruined a couple of your birthdays. Was Oha what? your birthday? Wait, no, that was the best. <laughs> or that made my birthday. Wait, Oha, that was one of my favorite birthdays of all time. That was my 30th. Yeah. And do you remember how I invited you? Because I was really proud of myself. By the way, I probably <laughs> no. tricked no one, but I thought I was being, because I'm so like by the book. 
Yes. Like, I'm so, I follow all rules. Oh, no. And oh, I'm, God. I'm, I'm, and for like, Ginny, we would, to go to dinner, you'd send me like a paperless post. I'd be like, can you just text me? So that's what I did. So I remember what I did was <laughs> I e-vites. told you guys, I sent you guys an invitation and it was that I said we were going to a Vegas club opening and that they were going to cover all travel and that all we had to do was like XYZ with the tabloids and da 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 because it was so not me and the thing is that once you clicked like this fine print link <laughs> I can't believe I haven't figured out how to do this on such a night, but once you clicked a fine print link it was like actually I'm picking you up in like a mommy van and we're going to go to Ojai and get mud baths and I was like damn there goes my husband right. so we went to Ojai and there was a very small group of us mm-hmm. and I mean I did get some kind of like I was in some kind of minivan I had gotten. I'd we got a, a minivan. minivan. And Ginny is, you are truly, it's so funny because we truly have so little in common. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we are nothing alike. <laughs> Ginny is like the most adventurous, like outgoing, like she's like, okay, this Saturday we're going to the Rocky Horror Picture Show live, yes! interactive show. Yes, yes, like we're going yes. to this outdoor screening, like my nightmare. Everything Ginny wants to do <laughs> involves like bug spray. Oh, you do? Well, yes. You have to like bring work. Lunchables and like mm-hmm. a citronella mm-hmm. candle. Mm-hmm. It's like an excursion. And um, I remember uh, my husband calls it the fun army. The fun army. I want to be like the the captain of the fun army. And I just want to like, like, like a field trip. <laughs> I'm like a field trip. We're doing things. We've got helmets on. We've got like, we have to take a class like to do it. <laughs> so we're in Ohio, and I'm like, oh, we're just going to like sit by the pool and like have margaritas. Which we also did. Which we, we, did. Did. we did take a mud bath. We did do that. Yeah. Oh, that was so fun. That was. And, uh... <laughs> and Jenny's like, okay, we're going to go to an apothecary and make perfume. Absolutely. Like, that's Ginny Goodwin one-on-one. Ah. I'm just like, isn't there, didn't Chanel nail it? <laughs> do, do, we are I making feel like our we could, own I feel like perfume. Same person that I remember, remember like 15 years ago when you're like, I got an ice cream maker. And I'm like, oh, did Briars not figure it out? Yeah, but by the way, it also always, we had to get rid of it because everything just turned into scrambled eggs. We made omelets. We made like that's chocolate omelets. Yeah, because every, I can't, I still can't make ice cream. I feel like my cooking skills have Someone risen nailed back. it though, Ben and Jerry have nailed it. Have, Jenny's yeah, like, no, yeah, I'm, yeah. let me give it a try. Yeah, yeah. Like, and so we go to an apothecary to make perfume. Uh-huh. And I don't remember, there's like this person who's like walking us through it and we're smelling, there's all these gorgeous glass bottles all over the wall. It's like so <laughs> magical. There's like, you know, vanilla and whatever, charcoal and coffee. Right, and I've invited a bowl to a china shop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, within the first 10 minutes, uh-huh. I pick up the orange blossom one. Oh, yes. Drop it. It oh, yes. shatters on the ground. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, so then we tried. The teacher tried to be kind. And we tried to continue the class. But everyone, everyone could only smell orange. And in fact, they decided that we needed to evacuate. <laughs> Literally, the woman was like, I have a migraine. Uh, I, I think we just need to go for a walk, maybe get some air. It was like, it was literally just like inhaling Lysol. And it was so cute how everyone was trying to keep going. (laughs) And she would be like, and what does, what do you smell of your like rose amber tea mix? And I'd be like, (sighs) orange? I think that's Tang. (laughs) I'm pretty sure that's Sunkissed. I'm not really Uh sure. But everyone, like our eyes were watering and stuff. That was the best trip. We had a picnic outside. We had a picnic outside. I think it was the first time I saw you naked. Oh, was it? I think so. I think so. No way. Probably. Well, maybe. I mean... Every, we all started like drawing stuff in the mud. In yeah, the mud that's, yeah. Oh yeah, that's oh yeah, because we were in mud baths. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm such a naked person now around my friends, and I wasn't back then. It was weird. I was like more insecure about my body back then. Yeah, but no, that's not weird. That makes sense. Yeah, you your think- relationship with your body has entirely changed. Gosh, it's so true. When Ginny knew me, did, oh, let me ask you a question. So when we first met, I had such crazy eating disorders. Did you? <laughs> her face. <laughs> Is it like the Swiss mask? Did you talk about Swiss yes. mask? I was like, did you know? Candy. You knew? And cereal? I would eat, basically, I would go to the grocery store and I would buy Swiss Miss hot chocolate. And we would go to like dinner. I can't believe, I cannot believe you guys are still friends with me. I would mix it with water like at a restaurant and just like eat it. it, And that's all I would eat. Mm -hmm. I was also so broke at the time. The fact that you guys, we would go to dinners that I could not afford because I was so desperate. And that was so naive of us too, which we just didn't know. But I think you guys were cool about the fact that I was like, oh, I'll just have a water. I'll just have some of your, you know, like it was like, I was always trying to manage it. But you guys never made me feel weird about it. You never judged me about it. Or I'd say like, you know, I'm going to come late. Right. Like I 
would come like right. at ten o'clock and hang after. Her. That's how you came up with the idea to start doing comedy. I'll yes. just leave during the during different <laughs> I'm too broke to with you guys, like, <laughs> and you won't let me just like scream about my vagina at no, dinner for we, two hours. So we should have just been no, but we should have been more considerate, more aware of the no. fact that we were like going to these restaurants. I should have been more honest. I was a lie. I just would lie because I didn't want you guys to not want to be friends with me. Oh God bless. And then so it's so interesting to me when I have a friend that's going through something, a bad relationship, body stuff, eating stuff, family stuff. And there's not a ton you can do. Like, how, how much did you know about that? It was, I mean, it was just, it was 100% obvious. <laughs> but the, you and guys, you went to the gym like twice a day. But you guys never judged me. You never. No, but you also, I also don't think that we, I don't think we can or should, nor should we necessarily want to change people, right? Like you have to come to things on your own. <sighs> you have to. And also you're not going to love yourself if you don't. And it also doesn't work. That's no. the other thing. You, no one's ever been in a bad relationship. And so I was like, hey, you know what? You should get out of this. And they were like, oh, my God. Good right. idea. Well, we all have our shit. Yeah. All of us have our shit. All of us. So it's also, I mean, and that's how I feel about relationships, too. Like, there's no, I mean, any kind of relationship, romantic or friendship. Like, there's always going to be something there that's like, I don't want to say compromise because I don't think you should compromise. But there's always going to be something there that's like the difficult thing that you navigate. Mm. But I don't know. I think you kind of choose, like, what are those difficult things that I want to navigate in life? Like, what am I okay with navigating? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In well, this, instead of it being, I don't want, yeah, I, I would like people to change if they want to change themselves. Right. I would like to support that process. Right. But if I try to change you and you don't, it's going to be bad. And if you do, now I know you're only this way because I changed you. Well, and it's not, there, like, there's nothing yeah. la probably lasting about that. And, yeah, and it's artificial. And that doesn't. Yeah, that doesn't and they like control any kind of like and then you're their actual mom. confidence, which you now have because you you went on this journey. Like, hopefully, we held your hands, but you know, but you still this was your journey. I remember because sometimes people just change your life and they don't even know they're doing it. And I just it happened at the right time. It was the right person. I remember one time you were at my apartment back when I lived by the comedy store and my cabinets were all full of like diet soda, diet candy, diet crap. And I never ate like real food. It was no. just all diet chemicals yep. shit. And you open the cabinets and you just were like... <gasps> Like your face, like you were just so Aww. horrified and seeing your face because I had normalized it. It's amazing what we normalize. Sure. It's amazing what we go numb to. Right. And I remember going like, what was that? And you were like, it's just so sad that this is what you think of yourself. Oh, and it like I know it was like the first time you had ever really acknowledged it. And something just like turned in my brain. And I was like, got it. Like, I just got oh, it right fuck. away. You said exactly what I need to hear when I need to hear it. The only time I remember actively trying to get involved was, do you remember we went and got Manny Petties during some, it was like a an award show. Yes. It was like Oscar season or something. Yes. And, you know, they do all of these, for, for listeners who are unaware, like we get spoiled rotten and, <laughs> you know, that we are invited to go to these, you know, like houses. Well, Ginny is, I'm not. <laughs> We, right, we, right. That's this, how it is. Is, this is like people always talk about celebrities they get like sent free stuff or whatever there's these lists where you get sent free like swag and Ginny will get sent like Prada and like Mew Mew I'll get sent but that like, all changes as you age by the way which I've noticed which we can also talk about at a point uh, I love I mean yeah. but you get these like gorgeous like Prada like gorgeous loafers and I will get like slap bracelets and Costco like <laughs> dollar store <laughs> merch well I don't think that is the case necessarily at this point, <laughs> but we went to, it was like some kind of award show. Yeah. It was like a pop-up yeah. spa. Yes. And they said, you can come get Manny petties And, and Wasn't I, crying I said, the whole time? yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember what I asked you. And by the way, I am not like, I had just got your child on, for nutrition, I but I asked you, <gasps> yeah, what did you eat today? Yes. Because you were drinking a, Frappuccino. Yes, the sugar-free. Uh, uh, sugar-free ice bean blended. Version. Sugar free ice blended. It was coffee bean, I think. It yes, wasn't. It yeah. was. So and and I said, can you could you I said, I first said, what have you eaten today? I was sobbing, crying on my phone. I was in some altercation with some guy that don't even remember. That's how insignificant it is looking back, even though it felt like the end of, of the world. Course. I was sobbing, crying at this beautiful suite. Yeah. And uh, I had only eaten basically like you had, you had a couple of those. But these like, like ice blended. They're like frappuccinos, basically. That's all I'd eaten all day. And I said, and how much did you sleep last night? And you Jenny said. just looked at me and I was like, and he won't text me back. Yeah. And I don't know what's happening. Yeah. And I'm going to die. And she just like, looked at me calmly. 
this is about. Yeah. What did you eat today? And you had not, and you hadn't slept the night before. And I remember I went home and I called Dory and I was like, okay, we got to do something. And so what we tried to do was trick you <laughs> into, we started looking through, because also like, I mean, again, I'm not a poster child for nutrition, but we were like, okay, so what can we trick her into thinking is going to make her skinnier, but it's actually really, really going to like help like balance her, balance, balance, balance her. Because I remember you guys being like, you know, fat actually isn't fattening. Sugar is yes, actually, yeah. Yes. And so the first thing we did was I sent you an article about hydration. I remember that. And I was like, if you could drink more water, you're going to be less hungry. And I really then, thought that was an article you were just sending both of us. Just nope. And then the next one we did was we started working with you on protein because we were like, if you eat some protein, you won't have to eat much of anything else. And then it was vegetables because like, if we can get some fiber, in, you'll, <laughs> you'll poop out all of the food you just ate and then you won't gain any weight. And like, it was like, we, that was the only time I felt like we got, we did try to be manipulative because we were like, if we can just make her think <laughs> <laughs> that we're aiding and abetting. <laughs> just called gaslighting. <laughs> then maybe, because we were like, if she's hydrated, we think, and I also, I mean, I don't drink much. Well, I drink Crystal Light like crazy. That's yeah, you do drink but Crystal, Light. Crystal Light. Crystal Light. But, um, but yeah, so that was, that. I feel like that, that was the only time we tried to actively interfere. And how are you so like, I mean, since I've known you, you've always had such a clear take on relationships. You've given me some of the best advice I've ever gotten in relationships. This truly blew my mind. Seriously. No, I know. You've been in some doozies. <laughs> I was about to say, I, <laughs> I've made some interesting choices before my present oh, husband. Oh, I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you had to watch me have crazy eating stuff. <laughs> I had to watch you in some crazy <laughs> relationships. God, I'm um, sorry with some of the guys you'll have to put up with. <laughs> no, it's, I'm so glad. I love, I love, I love a your past because it makes your current relationship that much more magical. Oh, sure. Do you know what I mean? Because I feel Ooh. like had we not made all those mistakes and gone down all those weird paths, we wouldn't be have anyone oh, sure. to compare. Yes. No, your I will say I think to. I take pride in I do think I'm a person who says, Oh, that didn't work. I'm gonna try this other thing. Yes, you're so good at that and not taking it personally and not overthinking it. You're just yeah. like, that was that moving on. Yeah. I also am just particularly thrilled that the man you did marry uh is my soulmate. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I know. We are, we are the same person. <laughs> I'm basically married. I mean, like, truly. <laughs> I've married you. Like, the first time I met Josh, we were, like, in a corner, like, dying laughing and, like, had so many inside jokes within five minutes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I'll even be like, well, who are you texting and flirting? He's like, it's widow. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, You're, her husband and I are like truly this like past life twins or something. So like, sometimes so, I come to you and I'm like, hey, I don't understand. I know. What is he doing? doing? I'm like, oh, yeah. that's what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. I'll text him. I got it. Yeah. Like, I'll, you've given me I'll some just game send changer him a things. Yeah. I'm so obsessed. But you said some things that changed my life because for the longest time in relationships, the only power I thought I had was withholding or leaving. Whoa. And one time you said leaving is not an option. Do you remember that? Yeah. I got that from someone else who probably doesn't want to be name checked, but that okay. that blew my mind when someone said that to me a long time and ago. And I was like, oh no, but going, I'm leaving was what I th the leverage that I thought that I Absolutely. had. Absolutely. And you were like, no, you it stay in the ring. It everything if you think I'm staying in the ring. You actually open up. You actually like try to negotiate uh -huh. something with someone. And you, how did you know Josh was like it? I, I mean, mean, I know why, <laughs> but it's like we've been in love a lot and we've been oh, in, I've, yeah. I've known you through a lot of relationships where I've thought I've met the one. I thought I found the 100%. one. hundred percent. I was in love where we both were like, okay, I, I've said to you, yes. this is the one. Oh, yeah. Many times. Oh, yeah. You've said it to me many times. Oh, yeah. And I do think there are many the ones, by the way. Like, I think that I don't believe there's just one person for us. I think so many elements, of course, play into it, like just timing. Yeah. <laughs> like time and place and where you are in your yeah, journey. My other soulmates are just too far away. Right. And like, <laughs> I mean, I do believe when people say like, oh, if only I'd met you sooner, things like that. Like, well, that's probably true. Yeah. Like if you had been, it dep timing yes. is everything. And experience, the experience that you have leading up to something. And I, I met Josh. I was engaged to be married, of course. And, what? Yeah, right. <laughs> and um, I met Josh and I, and what I thought was I am in trouble because yeah. I did think that there was not, I don't think, I think Josh will love this and not hate that I'm saying this. Um, I Gosh, won't listen to this. Never. He's <laughs> um, he hit your podcast, obviously. Not a fan. Um, I, I, right, but you asked me, and I'm like, what's a podcast? And it's like that thing I'm always listening to that Wit does. Um, so, so I had always thought 
that I needed to either be in a relationship where I was in lust or I was in love. But yes. I had never had both. <sighs> I just hadn't. And it didn't occur to me there could be both. And I was engaged to the most wonderful man. Mm-hmm. Um but there were just things that I didn't have in that relationship that I met Josh and I thought, but here's the thing. I thought I would not end up with Josh because also his dance card was full at the time. But I thought, now I know that I could end up with someone like Josh. Mm-hmm. So what they I are, thought, They exist. They're out there. Yes. Hold out for a hero. Absolutely. So I met him, called my mother, and I was on location for Once Upon a Time. And I said, I'm in trouble. And she said, you don't think... I'm in trouble. I met Whitney's song. <laughs> I met, I met, I met Whitney's, Whitney's husband. <laughs> I met Whitney as a man. And, um, and I will never forget my mother putting it this way. And by the way, she didn't have time to think this up. This was a one phone call, like, reveal to her. I said, I met this man. This is how I feel. And now I know. And my mom said that you need to cancel the wedding. And I said, yes. And she goes, baby, canceling a wedding is hard, but it's not that hard. And there was something about that that took, like, I cannot describe the relief I felt. Now, also, I am a spoiled brat. I mean, my wedding, by the way, was bought and pay- paid for. And I didn't realize that I had kept the invitations. It was a, remember, it was a, it was a destination wedding. Oh, we were at Knoxville or Nashville? We were going to be in Memphis. That's right. But I had not ever actually sent out the invitations. I had never actually opened the box. And it hadn't occurred to me that, that was weird that they were just sitting in my <gasps> garage Whoa. like four months before the wedding and that I still had not and also had not told my fiance that I had not taken care of even opening the box and looking Whoa. at the invitations. So when my mother said that and I realized I just needed someone to give me permission and to tell me like I like I feel like a million mothers on this planet would in doing the right thing by their children to say don't cancel this on a whim. Let's just see this through. Let's yeah, just. Yeah, yeah, but my yeah. mother just knew, and she knew that there were so many elements that were keeping me like entrapped in this thing, and that the wedding was probably the biggest one of the biggest elements. Yes, the logistics. And so, not only did that happen, but then I called my dreamy father, like business manager that I've had for twenty some odd years. Stuart, I'm gonna we make Stuart you. now listen to this. This is paying her nothing. <laughs> so, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I had people really taking care of me during that time. And again, did not think I was going to end up with Josh, but realized that's what I want. I want someone just like that who gives me these feelings. Yeah. And who is such a friend and who he was just the whole package. So we, and then his dance uh, card. Besides the fact that he's butt ugly. Right. Obviously. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, um, <laughs> he's just kind of ugly. That's the only major you know my taste. problem. Just like ugly, bad, just gross body. So he ended up, so his dance court card, when it, uh, when it freed up, we still decided that we were just going to be friends mm-hmm. because then we were trying to be terribly responsible adults and we were saying, okay, but we're on a show. And mm-hmm. if we, I mean, inevitably this will end. And I'm Snow White and you're Prince Charming yes. and it makes no sense. Yeah, it makes it no sense. It makes no sense that we'd be together. <laughs> and there's no cliche it's just, here at all. There's no metaphors. Like God's not trying to tell us anything. The universe is not aligning in our favor. Like nothing. But we, but what if it, but we were sure because also we are actors and we are on a set and we are on location and we are sure that this is a bubble thing and this is not going to work and we're going to ruin this for everybody. And what we came down to too was, and then one of us is going to have to leave the show and it's not going to be me. <laughs> So are you ready to be unemployed? Because Prince Charming's going to have to, Disney's going to have to approve Push Prince him Charming off cliff. Yeah, being killed. Yeah. Because um, you're not staying when we break up because we're not going to make everybody miserable. So we tried until like the fall to stay friends. And people and don't believe way, us. By the way, nobody I do, believes us. I believe you because I remember having to fucking hear about it and us <laughs> being like, just See, what are, what is this? What I would is, like what is sit this? outside your house. I was smoking. Oh, I was like, what is this performance where we're pretending you're not going to be together? It was but just like, we got together in the fall and on our first date, we were like, all right, we're going to take the slow and then we moved in <laughs> <laughs> like 10 minutes later and then we went to the show and we're like, hey, we're gonna get pregnant I know, I now. Remember, I remember when you were like, ah, oh, we're like not gonna get married. We're just gonna like. <laughs> oh, I tried to not get married for so long. And then, do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. So I was, because Josh kept saying things about, you know, he, he very gallantly wanted to wanted to wed. Yeah. And, um, and I would always say, no offense, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> <'Cause> you're <laughs> but ugly. I really, but I really feel, feel like, you know, I don't really understand what marriage Marriage doesn't mean the thing that it should mean for us to get married. Right. It's you know I was just on that. No one like, here needs citizenship. What are we doing? <laughs> like we just didn't. I didn't feel like we needed the piece of paper. I was like, can't we just be together forever? Yeah. Um. I've already canceled one wedding. Yeah. And he had been married, and so 
I kept saying no. And then something, some, I mean, I'm sure it was biological, but thank God some, when I was, I mean, because we did plan on let's live together and have babies. The babies were very, very much planned. And um, I remember like the day that the switch flipped and I came home and I, I was so pregnant. It's when you were pregnant. Yep. And I was like, I want your name. <laughs> I want your health insurance. I know I have my own, but I want yours. I want your DNA. Yeah, I, I want it all. I want a fancy <laughs> ring that is way too expensive. Like the whole kit and caboodle. And he was very generously, you know, inclined to oblige. So he... Patient with so your he possession <laughs> turning into the marriage hulk. <laughs> so, yeah. And so she married, got married pregnant, which I love so and much. And literally barefoot. You were maybe... Eight months. Eight months pregnant. Yeah. And what made you decide to do it pregnant? I suddenly wanted, I mean, that did become a logistics thing where yeah. I was like, I want to, ha I want this baby to come in the, I want us all to have the same name. And I remember right. during the wedding, right. I realized what marriage does mean to me. Tell me. By the way. I was too busy I taking selfies. I don't think I've selfies, ever, so what, what, what? <laughs> I think I've I miss ever most said this like, to anybody other than my husband. Um, when I was growing up, I thought that my parents were related because, I, I mean, it's just like my son's proposed to me all the time. By the way, I always say yes. Obviously. Do you blame him? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what kind of messing up I'm doing. Hugo asked me the other night, he was like, because we let them crawl in bed with us in the middle of the night. And the other night he asked me if he could still sleep on the same side of the bed when he's a grown up. And I was like, absolutely. And Josh said, That'll, there'll be more room because I'll be at my girlfriend's house. <laughs> My house. I'll be, I'll be at Whip. Like, I'll be here. I said, oh, we'll miss you. But um, but just like my children are always proposing to me, um, and I really do hope we get married. Um, <laughs> oh, that is so cute. Oh, my God. It's so cute. By the way, they... they, they Oliver Maybe they said, watched Big Love a couple too many well, times. Oliver, Oliver said to us the other day, he said, Daddy, I'm going to marry Hugo. And I could punch I could punch Josh because his reaction was, buddy, that's not really legal. And I want, I want it to be like, no, great. Well, I will plan the reception now. We just have to stay together. But I will <laughs> Lots of invitations. I <laughs> yeah, never. No, exactly. I'm just crossing out names, <laughs> but um, but but I thought my parents were related uh -huh. because I didn't understand. I don't know. There was just no concept. They were family. Yeah. So how were they not like blood relation? Yeah, so and during the wedding, I suddenly I remembered it during the wedding that that's what I thought of my parents, and I realized I felt that way about Josh, mm. like that we were somehow that this that this formality mm -hmm. in making us family was making us like have this like truly inseparable mm -hmm. like blood tie. And because he's been married before, I did tell him, by the way, at the wedding during the ceremony, I leaned over and I said, you realize that if you did this again, it'd be real tacky. So you are <laughs> so stuck with me. Like, like, I just, like, Says leaving not pregnant woman right. in a wedding dress. <laughs> yeah. Barefoot. Like, it's not just about child support. This is, you cannot, like, like, you cannot leave. And I do, I did <laughs> realize, too, that, like, save for, there, I've had so many relationship deal breakers in my life, and but I realized with Josh, this is so terrible, because it sounds like I'm giving him, like, some kind of pass, but even if he murdered somebody, I think I'd still be like, we're together, like, as long as we're together. We're together. But it's sort of like when I had Oliver, the first thing that went through my head was, oh, I understand, like, if you, like, all the women that I, like, watch interviewed on the news, like, if you ever did anything, like, I would hide you and lie to everyone about where you, I would protect you for, from from everyone. That's like, crazy I would, love that documentaries yeah. are made about. Yeah. 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 This is, a, you heard it here. Just, I feel like this is I now evidence. I you in the basement and I would lie to everyone so that they couldn't find you. Like, I suddenly got that, that about like, my kids. That, like, primal. Yes. Primordial, ferocious love at all costs. Which is why I do think that, like, my career has, and all my dreams have entirely changed. <laughs> Because, which I had to go through mourning about, for sure. I thought you were going to say had been shattered, but I'm glad you said changed. <laughs> no, no, no. No, it's a choice, I hope. I mean, aging in Hollywood is one thing, but I, but no, I, I realized I always thought that my kids were going to come along on the ride with me. Because, mm -hmm. come on, like, getting to be a working actress, it's a, it's a wild ride. Yeah. It is as, I mean, it's a, it's a crazy roller coaster, yeah. but it's really exhilarating and I thought that my kids would just come with me on the ride and the second I had them I was like oh this no the you ride. are the ride you are the ride and I am mm. I don't know I'm like your escort at the theme park who's gonna mm. like you know protect you and hold your shit 
I remember when you first, it was so hard for me to understand when you got famous because it was like I met you before you got like famous, famous, and then you got famous, but you were just Ginny. So yeah. It was just like, that always gets so confusing. And then, because I remember being like, we were your plus one for all of your, um, uh, the walk the line. Oh remember the walk the line. I you remember were more than my plus one for a while. <laughs> well, for walk the line. First of all, I remember you went to. Did you shoot in Tennessee? Right. Yeah, in Memphis. And you came back, and uh, we went and picked you up from the airport, and we're like, oh, Ginny. Because why did the studio oh, not send me a car? By the way, <laughs> it's is... taken me like twenty years so to say why. Ginny's did you like, not... I'm landing from shooting this movie with Reese Witherspoon and Joaquin Phoenix at LAX, like. Tonight at eight o'clock or okay, something. Is there any way you can? There is up. supposed to be a car. There is supposed to be transportation. I don't know how my agents missed this. The fact that we were picking you up is already right. weird, yeah. and we were yeah. like, "Oh, she's gonna have change. She just did this big studio movie. She's gonna come <laughs> back. She's gonna be such an <laughs> asshole. Like the Ginny we love is gonna <laughs> no. be just like this diva. She gets in the car in that fucking pea coat, the same fucking <laughs> uh, blue nasty oh, yeah. pea coat, same brand. And she's like, "I'm starving. Is there a Taco Bell close by? I needed a Mexican pizza and a spork. <laughs> like, like nobody's business. The same." <laughs> She's the same bitch. She's always been. I still love Taco Bell. I remember back then. And by the way, it's not like there wasn't Taco Bell in Memphis. Like, I yeah, I know. know. You had just had it in the airport probably <laughs> on the yeah, way I out. Yeah, another pizza. Did you ever feel weird about your body? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she says she adjusts her body shape in the I chair. I just mean, I remember like, I just remember there being so many weird little like, things about that Ugh. and when you I feel like things have changed in the last couple of years a little bit you can tell me if I'm wrong no I'll talk openly but I feel like it. when we started it was like women's thighs couldn't touch oh my gosh you know who really uh had a huge impact on me was Julia Roberts like and I did my first movie with her so wild I know and she I feel like she took me under her wing in a way that I mean I've I, I owe I owe her so much. We all do. We all do. <laughs> we all owe her we so all much. Do. Um, when I started, I had never. I, by the way, I was on Weight Watchers as a child, so I had. I but I, but I can't say I had body issues mm -hmm. because I felt really because of Weight Watchers. I think I I felt really good about just being who I was and being healthy and and. I don't know, even though I read a lot of fashion magazines, it, I never thought I was supposed to, mm -hmm. I don't know, I never, I never thought like my thighs weren't supposed to touch. Yeah. Um, I just thought like, I, like this is the, this is the me package and I am an actress. And, and I so am stunning I, and gorgeous and I'm God nailing bless. it. Like, but I, I was shocked when we started doing press for Mona Lisa Smile. I mean, I was supposed to be like, my character in Mona Lisa Smile was supposed to be uh, mousy. Mm -hmm. Right, a little dowdy, but that's really fun, and you know, I like not having to put on as much makeup. Yeah, like it's like, yeah. gr like I don't know, I don't consider that like an insult, yeah, in any way. But um, but I remember when the press started coming that's out because you could never look dowdy, but yeah, no, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Stunning. By the way, I dressed up today because I was I put on a sweatshirt this morning. I was like, eh, no, this is, this is gonna look like I rolled out of bed. Um, but I I remember when the press came out and when I would do interviews. I mean, people were really mean, and. I remember the girls, but uh, of Mona Lisa Smile, all, I mean, seriously, like, especially like, you know, um, well, they all got my back, but especially Julia Roberts got my back. And we would all get very defensive. And like um, they'd ask you questions in junkets? Yeah, like I was in a huge press conference and I actually had a journalist say, what's it like to be like, you know, uh, like a heavy actress in Hollywood? And the thing that's not, I mean, I exploded. I lost my mind on this woman. And I did have my publicist at the time this pull me woman. aside after. after yeah, it was a woman. Of course it was a woman. Wow. Um, and then I did have my publicist pull me aside afterwards and say, here's the problem with how you handled that. Your reaction is all that they will now print. They don't show. They're not going to show this woman. There's no camera on this woman. Yes. They're not going to. You have got to learn how to. And she taught me that the art of. Um, I love this is like a Zootopia thing, by the way. Like totally plugging Zootopia. <laughs> thing. Um, I think everyone's seen it. <laughs> so, and there's this, uh, this little movie I did. But um, but that, you know, you if you don't want to answer the question that they ask, answer a different question. Ooh. Because the questioner is not going to ever be on camera. Um, yes. So anyways, my What's it like to be so gorgeous? Oh, thank you so exactly. much for asking. Exactly. Oh my gosh. How, how, oh my God, I'm flustered. But instead, I really was an asshole to this woman. Like she deserved it, but yeah. I attacked her. 
her physically and things like that. So um, that was not cool. But I feel like Julia did a really good job of both um, protecting me and saying things like taking microphones and saying Jenny's not going to answer that, especially too about personal things. Mm -hmm. Like if anybody asked me about men, she would say Jenny's not going to answer that. And not in a controlling way. And it's truly like she was my buddy through all of this. I think we forget, I especially think in this business when you're like, oh, I'm hired to do to be a puppet and to do what other people say. And I just have to give and give and give myself away. And she kept saying, I remember, I'll never forget like, she cornered me after we did a photo shoot together because there were also she would refuse to do photo shoots without me for press. Like oh. when I wouldn't be asked to be part of a magazine spread, she'd be like, not only am I not doing this without Jenny, but she's going to be the one on the page with me, things like that. And um, I remember she also cornered me. We were at a shoot and she said, please, 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 please don't ever get it. Give in to this body image shit. Like you are beautiful. Do not change. Please do not let go. Like do not listen. You're to a, I'm sorry, size four like i was probably like a four six yeah like i was probably like a good six but like that's tiny <laughs> like now T- i'm like truly like, oh, t- i would give to be I in a six i remember i couldn't fit into your jenny had one mark jacobs dress that she wore for about four, four years, years. <laughs> Dory. We just kept changing <laughs> we, we back and all, forth but everyone would wear the dress and then i went to put it on date. i couldn't even fit it up my back no and i remember because you're just built differently because you've always been slimmer than me for sure but we have to, it doesn't yeah the point is i think what comes off on camera it's like if someone's face is more round or more oh, angular 100%. you know but that's the thing i've never been like i'm like like that and people always meet you and they go she's tiny and P- and i've always taken that too is i mean it's a compliment but it is a testament to you yes, also how movie stars you're on a giant sc- I'm, I'm size of a school of bus you're huge. i'm the size of a school bus <laughs> but yeah so it was it was a crazy road in the beginning But I would say my body, so I would say I've never had issues except this. I would like there to be more attention paid to what happens to the female body during pregnancy and afterwards, because I feel like I read everything and watched everything. And I feel like there is this, there's so much put onto pregnancy and postpartum life that's like trying to convince ourselves of this thing Mm -hmm. as in I thought that pregnancy was going to be all like you know rainbows and unicorns and that I was going to you know love being pregnant and love have you know like love the delivery process yeah yeah and and that postpartum life would be about like bonding with my baby and it was truly friends who said to me by the way you probably haven't read this in any of the like 400 books you've read but like you're gonna be in a diaper and your belly's not gonna go back no matter how much you exercise Mm -hmm. and your skin and your stretch marks and the sags and that shit will never go away no matter how hard you work i mean like i have a friend who um will remain nameless who had ruined her couch because she was breastfeeding her child and had a hemorrhoid and it exploded. Oh, yeah. Bright red blood on her oh, couch. the bleeding. I remember. And by the way, so this is this story. Can we do this on your show? Can yeah, just, yes. Okay, okay. So I was um, having like the same issues all pregnant women have where like I, you know, would all suddenly be like, I'm bleeding all over the floor. Like after I had the baby. Um, or I was wetting my pants endlessly for months. Oh, yeah. And um, but anyways, in the beginning, when I was wetting my pants, I didn't want my husband to know. By the way, he delivered the baby. You're like, I got a wet ass pussy. <laughs> I'm just squirting. You make me wet. You make me so wet. I don't know why I thought he would find this unattractive. He delivered the babies and still wants to have sex with me. But I was still like hiding these things from him because I thought they were so not like feminine and attractive. And like evil. a crevice is a crevice. So I was calling. I remember calling my, I went into the bathroom and as if having the bathroom door closed was not enough. And as if he wasn't like downstairs, I remember hiding. I like crouched down by my own toilet to get on the phone with my OBGYN and I called him and I was whispering. Spring, and I was like, I'm wetting my pants. <laughs> and I rem- I'll never forget this. He goes, yep. And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm, I'm wet. Like, I will get up and realize I, like, wet the seat that I was sitting on, and I didn't know it. And yep. And I was like, okay, so wait, what are you not understanding? Like, I am like a child. Like, I, I can't stop wetting my pants. And he goes, you had a baby. What did you expect? By the way, love that about the stuff him. they don't prepare you for. Yeah, and so and then I found out, that, but that was actually when I found out that I needed to actually order and wear diapers. But um, but I feel like there's something that happened. Like I see a disconnect. There's a lot of like love your body, love your body, love who you are, but I don't see a lot of like 
love the like saggy belly you're now going to have for the rest of your life. But I also would like to have been prepared for it. Yes. I mean, there was so much stuff. I remember when both you and Dory um, uh, had babies. I remember Dory saying, I thought everyone's water broke. Right. Because we see in movies like splash time to go to the hospital. Yeah. And she's like, I felt contractions, but I was like, oh, there's no like we where is the information to actually prepare people? I feel like the step by step romantic comedies in the 80s are, are most of our preparation for. Episode. Oh, yeah. But no, it took me getting like a phone call from a girlfriend in England who was like, oh, by the way, when you're in the hospital, ask them for the numbing spray. And I'll tell everybody this. I'm like, you after you have a baby. I'm going to tell you this right now. Mm-hmm. After you have a baby. Um, after my surrogate yeah, has a baby. So, so you want to tell the surrogate <laughs> to, um, you get this like, because they don't just give it to you. You have to get your doctor to get a prescription for it. But it's like this sport, like injury numbing spray. Ooh. And you use that down there. Also, like you can't like sit on a toilet or wipe for eons. So I yeah. started using a hair dryer at the Whoa. toilet to like prevent like getting rashes and things. I have a friend who tore... 12 inches oh yeah and she had to go get the rejuvenation oh yeah and she said that was more painful than the childbirth really yeah I'm not gonna lie when it, during my second child at my doctor because the second one like falls out and um <laughs> and so after Hugo like fell out into Josh's arms I looked at the doctor and I was like hey while you're down there <laughs> well <laughs> there are some things that I and he's like I feel like we've accomplished I remember too the doctor said I feel like we've accomplished a lot here today and I was like, just <laughs> I can't feel anything anyway. And then I did ask him, You don't I even did, need to put me under. Right, I did say to him, by the way, which I do appreciate, and this is about like love your body stuff. I did say to him, like, is there any way that I could get like a tummy tuck and have um like at the same time that I knock it out, two birds. Yeah, like but I but I was having my babies vaginally and he was like, Nope. And I was like, I, this is Hollywood. I'm sure that there's a way. Come on, there's gotta be a guy. And there's- he walked me through why, you know, if you decide to do this down the line. That's one thing. Mm-hmm. But this is why I'm not going to let you go through like that process while you're going through this process, right, which I really appreciate. You're going to be breastfeeding and you're going to be on painkillers. And well, like. and he was like, and it's messy and you're just getting somebody who can. I mean, he had all kinds of good reasons for like, you know, science and mm-hmm. body and healing and things. They, um, um, she said that when she went and got the vaginal rejuvenation, the doctor asked her size wise, would you like to go back to 16, 18 no, or no, 21? No, and I was like, no, no how no, big no, of a difference no, no. <laughs> was your I was like, that is so sp- my vagina did not change size I mean, I between hope, 16 right? and 18 i don't think that's amazing what did she decide by the way i think she went back to like 18 yeah but she <laughs> just was just like medium. yeah she was like 18 happy and 16 she, it was like such a specific projection by the doctor right it was just like where did you get these numbers um but yeah you can like decide how small yeah. you want it to be <laughs> <That's> <laughs> we got to do a two for one at some <laughs> point how um did you get so clear on You've always been so relentlessly authentic. I know it's your mom. I know your mom. Uh, I have super she's mom. My, I know. She's a superhero and she's a saint. Like, why have you always been so authentic? Like, you never lie. You've never been fake. Well, I'd never probably be been... a terrible liar. Let's just be honest. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> she's for a for a, literally one of the most brilliant actresses working today. <laughs> she's a horrible Dur- liar. Dory gives me the hardest time about we'll see someone on, like at a restaurant pre-pandemic. She'll yeah. be like, wow, you hate that person. I'm like, no, I wasn't. <laughs> But you could tell. <laughs> could you just act the way you do in movies <laughs> without the cameras? Like, I have <laughs> no idea you were that bad an actress in real life. But it's just like there's no, there's never any drama with you. There's never any. Aww. Like I feel like I'm so spoiled by my relationship with you and our third Dory. Because then afterwards, I'd work with people, and I'm like, oh, people are uh, people are nuts. <laughs> people are nuts. You know uh, what is it? Is it being from Tennessee? Is it your uh, mom? I think. I don't think, well, by the way, and I've never talked about this before on camera on recording with anyone. I mean, you've heard this. So when, I mean, I think that a lot of who I am, I mean, is is like just really, really, really good. I hope parenting and grandparenting and having a superhero sister as well to him. I'm extremely I mean, your close. grandmother collected dolls. What could have gone wrong? <laughs> <laughs> the biggest collections in the world. Um, I've got a doll. I've got a porcelain doll myself. Um, but, um, but, uh, you know, when I was a teenager, I was in a really abusive relationship and I was and I suffered from depression and saw doctors for years and years and years. And by the way, I those the one did not lead to the other. It was just like the perfect storm of adolescence um, and being in a bad situation. And, you know, my parents tried to keep me out of the abusive relationship and to help me. And they did. They they took every step that a parent should take to help a child in that situation, meaning like they were, you know, the safe place for me to go. 
Um, and they got me the help that I needed and made me see that asking for help is the absolute categorical, most noble thing that you could ever do. Um, there's some, like, they've really made me see that, like, there is strength in saying, I can't do this by myself. And and so I do feel like, I, I think that there was, a f- like, a moment when I was about 16 when I realized that my life could really go one of several different ways and that most of the ways were were a very, very bad way. Um, and I could make a choice. And I just suddenly, for me, for me, how I've navigated, how I navigated mostly in the past, because it was a chemical thing that that seems to have righted itself as I have, you know, as my hormones have bounced out. Um, so it was, okay, I need to go on medication. Yeah. And I need to talk to people regularly and and get that help that my parents taught me I need a bit. Like the choice is gonna be to change my life. Like I can, I can I think I felt like there was nothing to lose, right? Can't get worse. Like it was, I was in such a bad, dark place that I was like, well, I could just keep going down those like several different roads that I can envision. Or I could choose the like really, really, really unlikely road, which is I leave Memphis and I try to get into the top acting schools and I, you know, never come home again except to see my family what and i, I just become, go to a movie with julia roberts right and i just maybe just i should try, do that just like try to do the other thing <laughs> like try to do the opposite of what i'm doing now contrary action and see if that is that what that's mm-hmm. called and i was like and we can just like it's not like failing would matter yeah. because i can always do that later yes exactly i can always go back to that yeah but like i haven't tried the thing that is I haven't tried the unlikely thing that is like, what if I could become a working actress and support myself doing that and have a different life and surround myself with a different kind of people? And and so when that so but also I'm I'm spoiled rotten in that it worked so quickly. Like there Mm -hmm. was such immediate gratification. Like Mm -hmm. I got into the top acting schools. Um, But I think also it's because I was just being super nervy um, because I had nothing to lose. And I remember going up to like the, you know, head of the program at the school that I chose um, and said, I think my audition was terrible. And I said, I can't wait to see you in the fall. And I think that it was that kind of thing. I did that at my first movie audition for Mona Lisa Smile. That was my first movie audition. And I said the same thing to the director. I like got 1950s clothes and went to the audition and said, like, I can't wait to see you on set, which is really me being an asshole. It's, it's so, I don't it's, recommend people it's do that. It's so crazy now that you like, yeah, if you hadn't have gotten the job, it would have been insane. Oh, by the way, like now also that I like screen test people on the other side, yeah. where I'm like helping people get some job I'm on. Like, I'd be so turned off by someone saying that to me, I think. I also remember when you auditioned for Big Love, you went oh in and you were thrown like you just lost focus oh yeah and you said can I go outside and, and collect lis- myself and collect myself and listen to my yeah my music music for a second and come back yeah and I thought I had ruined it you I took like, control uh, of your environment but I thought that I had, I was like oh I wasted all their time I probably ruined it but it was the only way that I could yeah get myself where I needed to be to then go back in and then and how did you know you were just like I'm not I need to just like regroup like how did you know to take that contrary action really like when you have 10 people staring at you like tom hanks and brilliant writers you know what i'm really good at which josh and i have had to learn to um navigate because he's not like this um no he's like me i'm like i would rather just fail in front of you well like then take five minutes for myself if he have and if we have a conflict like josh wants to address it head on Mm. and i am hardcore about i need to walk away from this and I'll be back. I love you. I am not abandoning you. What have you eaten today? Yes. <laughs> but I'm not going to I'm not going to address this until I st- I have to I'm a step away. Yes. Uh, that's I what we that's away. what we're all working towards. Uh, the ability to take pause. Yes. To go, you know what? Pause. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to collect myself cuz yep. right now I'm going to say something cruel. I'm yep. going to say something mean. I'm, I'm going to regret it. I'm going to roll my eyes. Yep. And it's not going to be how I feel. Yes, I'm, I'm going to regret it. It's say what escalate. you mean. Say what you mean. Mean what you say and don't say it mean. I am not there yet. Let me just circle back. Yeah. So I'm hardcore. I mean, I, any fight starts and I'm like, I'll be back. Like, don't, don't oh think my I'm, gosh. I'm not abandoning this. I'm not abandoning you, but I'm walking away. Yeah. Adults can't be abandoned. Oh, that's. We I have like cars. Like yeah. Like yeah. Like my therapist, like our therapist uh, <sighs> says that all the time. Cause I'm like, I just feel abandoned by this person. And she goes, adults can't be abandoned. 
That's you have a car, you have a house. Only children can be abandoned. That is so that's no. I'm gonna use those you notes. don't get to have that. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm big on call Georgia. <laughs> With everyone in my life, by the way, because at this point I've sent everyone to Georgia. Oh, I've had Georgia on the podcast. Everyone yeah. knows everyone. Oh, yeah. Everyone knows Georgia. Oh, I sent Georgia's podcast. That podcast. I sent that around to people mm-hmm. who I've been tra- who have been saying like I really feel like I think I need someone. I'm like you need Georgia. Yep. Everyone yep, needs yep, Georgia. Yep. 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 So we'll have Josh and I will have discussions about you know something regarding because I do feel like I take gross advantage of Georgia because I'm always like. How do I not mess up my, our kids? Like, I'll call and be like, can they watch Star Wars? <laughs> what do we do about... By the way, this this therapist has Star Wars posters in her office. <laughs> <Which helps>. so, <laughs> can they watch Game of Thrones? Yeah. Um, What's been the most surprising feedback you've gotten from her in terms of something you thought was going to mess a kid up but doesn't? Oh, my gosh. I mean, she's like... I feel like she has absolutely like created the structure that is our child rearing. Mm. Um, and that's, and like, here's the thing. I feel like my childhood was spectacular. I am obs- like a- obsessed with Josh's mother, who's like the healthiest, most brilliant. Like I won the mother-in-law she's contest. A trip oh too. my God, I love her so much. <laughs> she is so, you. she's everything you want in a mom. Oh, <laughs> she's just like. <laughs> I won the mother-in-law contest. Yeah. I get so ex- if she's going to come visit and Josh is out of town. Like I'm who would play her in a movie? Time. Catherine Keener, Laura Dern. Oh, Laura! Laura be Dern, so brilliant. like Laura Dern. Uh, she's like a, an amazing, uh, she's the best energy, like amazing, you've ever met. big heart, beautiful, blonde, so smart, yeah, and just, just like so. Like she'll just say, she'll say things to me that I'm always like, how did you know how to handle yeah, that? Yeah, she's way? just like elegant, but like wears more turquoise jewelry than me. She's the, always making. I, she's you can hear her coming, I like love, the dangling. God, I worship her. <laughs> um, I get so stoked. Yesterday, I was on the, I was on Facetime with her for so long before I was like, I better show Josh that I'm talking to you. I'm gonna get in trouble <laughs> it's gonna be like why have you not she's just pure her? wisdom pure yes. life um so so it's not that we are reacting to that and i just want to like disclaimer and going to georgia but we but because we're actors we really went to her and we were like how do we not mess them up more yeah um and she's so how do we act like we're good parents <laughs> right right and she's been I mean, her whole thing is structure and routine mm-hmm. and boundaries and all these things that are very also like it work, This works very well for me. Mm. Um, so I feel like the, the thing that actually surprised me the most was it just involved this logistical thing that was we were going to be Josh and I had to move and move and move during a very short period um, while we were shooting some specific things for once upon a time. She told us to leave our kids at home. Mm. And I was like, I thought it's sort of like that. I thought they were going to come along with me for the ride thing. And even though we were already there, it, it put it in. I don't know. It put it even clarified you know that like shifted things even more to focus Mm. she was like no 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 you're not going to drag them Mm. from location to location location for these months your mother is staying at your house they have an opportunity to be in school Mm. so as long as they are getting eye contact and attention and love and feel safe Mm -hmm. all of these things they get from your mother as it is Mm. so and your mom's raring to go and that is how we're designed we're designed to be raised by a couple different women the village it doesn't only have to be the mom yeah and she was like so they stay in LA with your mother. You FaceTime them all the time. You keep technology away from the mother otherwise, but you yes. FaceTime with them nonstop. And like you like they will be so happy. And they they don't care at all. When they know that Josh is going away for six months, they have this thing that they say back and forth with Josh where they go, they say, Daddy comes back always, always, always. Uh, and the thing that I think is different about uh, like like families that are separated, like truly separated, yeah. or families of the past who didn't have FaceTime technology is they probably did feel a sense of abandonment. But and Josh fears that with our kids, but Georgia keeps telling us no. Mm. Because the thing is, when he's gone to New York to shoot Manifest for mm-hmm. six months a year, mm-hmm. my kids are being told incessantly by me that their father adores them, mm. that he misses them. I mean, we give them, you know, dad sends them millions of presents and he FaceTimes them nonstop and they wear T-shirts with his face on it and they sleep on pillows with his face on it. And like, they don't feel... It's harder on us than it is on them. Yeah. For them, it's normal, but not the kind of normal that is like abandonment is normal. Mm-hmm. They For them, it's just, you know, daddy's still... Com- they, they focus on the comeback part. Yeah. They can... And they can adapt. Yes. I think more than we can. Like, yes. the, you know, and I remember she was telling me once like... Us worrying about kids is so much harder on them than the thing we're worrying about <laughs> oh. <laughs> because they just see us worrying in panic, yes. but they don't know what we're worrying about. So they're just like, all yes, I they see, feel the worry. they're just learning stress and they're just learning panic all the time. Oh, yeah. They, something else that Georgia says that I love that I throw at people is um, she says, you know, like life is the ocean and the parents are the buoys. Oh, 
So we try to always be the buoys, always. And we try to never undermine each other. <gasps> so what do you do? So you do you say, okay, uh, one of the kids wants a chocolate bar, whatever. He asks us, we have to go agree and then come back with no, one answer? No, but we don't counter what the other parent has decided. Uh, but if, and if there's a conversation that needs to be had about, dude, the sugar, then we have that You have private. to be a united front. Yes, but we'll make that decision afterwards. We can't, because we're also realizing we can change the rules on the kids and yes, that's fine. Yes, 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 yes. But you can't disagree in front of them. No. Can't so if daddy, with says, if daddy says something, that's amazing. <laughs> if daddy says something, I do go with it, even if I hate it. And then I'll have a private conversation with Josh. Because what I don't want is my kids to think that, I don't want them, I don't want them to see me undermining their dad. Ooh. Something my children will see all day. Every day. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> their dad needs to, their dad is like, he's the king of the house and he needs to be empowered and I'm the queen of the house and I need to be, to be empowered. This is why Jenny will be married forever. <laughs> uh, and why I will be single no, forever. No, um, Just marry us. Are you Googling a French word? Why don't you mind your own business? <laughs> are you Googling a French word? Ready? <laughs> you are! <laughs> new, <laughs> new for and pa. No. Nuva ring. Nope. <laughs> okay, I don't know. <laughs> Mine fell out. <coughs> New for and pa means now for a break in Swedish. Oh. I think they shut up talking to me in Swedish. Hal kaften. I like that. That's, <laughs> that's not serious. That's shut up in Swedish. Hal kaften. The point Swedish. is, the point is, you need to be able to insult people in every language. Folks. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say here. You need to be able to fight in every language. You need to be able to gossip about people in other languages so they can't understand you. Um, smorgasbord. I can say toccata d'elefante muy offende. What does that mean? It means your elephant face offends me. <laughs> I had a, one of my managers was Puerto Rican and she only taught me things like that. And she's like, do you want to know how to say anything helpful? And I was like, no, you're not Babbel. Just teach me the insults. Bra. Just so you know, this is an ad for Babbel. We that, means, <laughs> that means good. Bra. Bra. Well, here's the thing. I matched with a guy from Stockholm on a dating app. So he said, yeah, bra. <laughs> Take off your bra. Yeah, he said, bra, bra. <laughs> So I know. <laughs> bra, bra, bro. So now I need to learn a language immediately. Um, and I've tried before. Like, I, I feel like I learned some French in high school, but it didn't really stick. I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't focused. I didn't really, um, I don't do well in like 45 minute at a time teaching chunks. I just like, it doesn't work for me. I get bored, but Babbel figured it out how to They're 10 to 15 minutes. They figured out a way to teach you a language that you can actually absorb it, you can actually remember it, and works with my attention span. And they teach you words and phrases in like sentences yeah, and yeah, not yeah. like, here's how you say scarf. And you're like, and, and in what, what context? context? In what context? And you're just like, la bufanda. Deta bra. <laughs> Me fully talking about other languages when I can barely speak English. Tak. Ta what? That means thank you. Thank you. In Swedish. They even has, dog. What I like about this, because you know I have a wild ass voice, is that this has speech <laughs> recognition technology, yeah. so it helps improve your pronunciation. That word. <laughs> your the you pronunciation. The fact that you can't pronounce the word pronunciation. Your pronunciation is, is and dark. accent. And I was like, I need that. Nagar so neste bus? Uh, they have 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German that you can choose from. Vad are clocklen? That means what time is it? Vad are Clock clan. What time is it? The it's time. Bad are clocking. <laughs> clocking. Stop. <laughs> Babel's like, this is not what we do. <laughs> They're like, go to the app. Download the app. 14 different languages. Spanish, French, Italian, and German. I love to learn German. Babel is available in an app or online. I do it on an app when I'm working out. Am I allowed to say that? I like to sync it across all devices. And you can do it. <laughs> really? Yeah. But you can also do it when you're like going for a walk, when you're working out, when you're running. Like I learn better when I'm like moving. Um... Right now, if you purchase a three-month subscription, Babbel will give our listeners three additional months free. Wow. With promo code good for you. Three additional months free if you go to Babbel.com. Learn that language today. Now's the time. We're in a pandemic. We're going to be able to travel soon. Soon the borders are going to open up, and you're going to want to travel. You're going to want to go to Europe. You're going to want to go to Germany. You're going to want to go to France or Spain because life is short because we're living in a nightmare. You're going to want to go to Italy. So you need to learn the language first. Don't be disrespectful. Babbel. Three additional months free if you go to babbel.com. Use promo code good for you, bra, on your three-month subscription. Babbel, 
dot com. That's B A B B E L dot com. Promo code good for you. Bra job. Ah, uh, better help. Better help me read this ad. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> so stupid. Um, <laughs> please leave that in. <laughs> Go, please. Listen, there's something interfering with your happiness. No comment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or preventing you from achieving your goals. <laughs> your goals. I'm right here. <laughs> right here. Better help can access your needs to match you with the a lo- what the, better help will help you find a life and professional therapist you can start communicating Why are you reading? 48 Let's just speak hours from the heart speak from the heart i need help <laughs> <laughs> better this is, help this is a cry for help <laughs> i need better help because they can connect me to a licensed professional therapist i can talk to them real quick mm-hmm. um i can do it from the comfort of my home you guys I can no, do it. you can't not be in therapy you ha- better help has made it so there's no excuse anymore to be crazy. Yeah, what or- therapist can you eat nuggets and talk to? <laughs> when can I eat a bowl of Teddy Grahams while also crying on my couch? That is so royal. I didn't even think about royal. that. Royal. You better help. You can snack while healing your childhood. You really can. Well, I, the, I it took me so long to get into therapy because number one, I couldn't afford it. But number two, the driving there, the parking, the rigmarole, the it's just like, and then you're worried you're gonna run into someone in the waiting room. Like it's just such a not therapeutic experience going to therapy. BetterHelp does it in the privacy of your own home. You can log in anytime, send a message to your counselor. You're gonna get timely responses. Write that in there so that you don't take an action or send that email or say that thing you can never take. Also, back. therapy is a luxury, and BetterHelp is more affordable. That's right. And they also offer financial aid. Yes, but you save money in the long run for not having to pay for that divorce. <laughs> yeah, that too. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. You deserve it. Visit their website, read their testimonials that are posted daily. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling. Visit <laughs> betterhelp.com slash Whitney. You do the rest, Benton. This That's, is where you shine. <laughs> visit betterhelp.com slash Whitney. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, and join the over. One million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. If you're one of those million people, slide into my DMs. I date guys that go to therapy. (laughs) In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp (laughs) that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. I'm available. Special offer for Good For You listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Whitney. Great segue. (laughs) (laughs) Great segue into big love. Do you remember when you were shooting that and you were scared didn't you have some crazy security thing happen oh my gosh but that was the very beginning i remember that you like were like i'm scared to be at my house okay (laughs) so we were warned ahead of time because there were crazy things happening in the news when we were making the first season and the show was not yet out and there were very real horrible you know discoveries being made about this way of life for mm-hmm. people, um, especially I'm in the like one that'll get the, the West. Death threats, don't worry. Um, and so, you know, I mean, and I'm talking about um, cult life. I'm not talking about like right. prop, like like recognized organized religion, right, right. life. Um, and so, because there were these things in the news. By the way, this is like before we had so many like media and news outlets and social media right, and like right. so so we didn't have as much information mm-hmm. and we were told i remember <laughs> by powers that be that we need to to like make sure we had good security systems and because we were going to be representing something that people did not want revealed right um or revealing things that people didn't want revealed so um i was scared in the beginning and then realized it was all because then nobody really gave, gave a shit because <laughs> by the way it's like a tv show i, know. I remember really just like i have security issues i'm like we're like people know who you are like what are no we- i was so and it was yeah, <laughs> when it wasn't did like get papar- this famous we weren't worried about like paparazzi we were worried about yes I like remember. yeah it was being worried about like these people being very angry because we were representing real people and just gave them of course yeah there names. was a lot of emotion um and and there were a lot of like arrests and busts at the time. And so, anyways, once the show actually started airing, we realized like there's no, no like they're nobody fine. cares. Yeah. They don't have HBO. <laughs> no, they're not gonna watch. Do you remember when you put smiley faces on your pasties? Oh my gosh, <laughs> I still do this, by the way. <laughs> so nudity, a hundred percent, still do this in nudity writers. This is a Laura Lenny thing. She taught me this. Tell me. I mean, I didn't. I. I mean, I. I haven't worked with her, but she told me this, like, because she's Jean Traporn's best friend, and we had dinner one night, and she told me this. That when you shoot a nude scene, if in your nude contract it yep. says you cannot show my nipples, yeah. 
you wear little pasties. Yes, because there are loopholes. Now, I am the, by the way, I'm the only person I know that reads every word of my contracts. <laughs> For sure. I read every word. I read every word of my husband's contracts. I, I am crazy. No one is seeing my husband's day. <laughs> right. So, and I'm big on, I mean, my poor lawyers, because I'm like, I think I should, I want this extra clause. And they're like, that doesn't exist. And I'm like, it does, it does now. now. <laughs> um, but uh, I need everything in writing. But, um, but so there is a loophole, and it is in writing that um, if if you have a nudity clause, which by the way, SAG has really taken care of us at this point. Mm -hmm. Like now, now, like things <laughs> they have call to be it signed. SAG because they're talking about what we look <laughs> what like nude. After we have babies. <laughs> um, the uh, I feel like SAG now has made it so they have to, you know, jump over other hurdles to get us to be naked but right. it used to not be that way and so in my nudity clause it would say do i need to do that by the way right now what oh no do i need to do i that? just started crying when you talked about oh, some things so now my oh, makeup no! is coming off do no! i look crazy no not at all so i'm just doing that at all but i get like a lot of mascara underneath so you can tell maybe me like a tiny it. one on this side up uh -huh. yeah yep yeah, right here my new victoria beckham uh, makeup that I'm so we'll get about. send send us some product oh my gosh her makeup's insane no that's good that eyeliner is like the best thing i've ever used just do okay Thank you. Um, so uh, I'm always trying to be moist, and so my mascara gets everywhere. <laughs> um, I really am. I, all I do is moisturize. This pandemic is just oh, me, trust me moisturizing. All I do is lube That's my all face I do. up. Um, what Laura Lenny told me to do was just write. Now, they don't want you to write all over the pasties. The pasties are flesh-colored on purpose. They want them to look like your body yes. in case they're accidentally caught on screen. And the same for the down-below parts. They're supposed to look like if you get a flash of it, you don't think about it. Yes. It's supposed so if you to have a like nude pasty, you could kind of, it could pass get away. off. Yes, yeah. But instead, I went to that sticker place at the Grove and got loads of stickers. <laughs> or sometimes I would use those. And sometimes I would take a like a permanent marker and I would write all over the paste. I still do this. I just write on them now because I'm too lazy to get the stickers. Um, I also just don't think stickers don't stick as well as they used to. I've noticed my kids' stickers, but um, but um, and I'll, they're so moisturized. <laughs> oh, well, this could be. But I write on I write on the pasties things like stop looking at my boobs, yes, no like way, Jose, and like, smiley faces and stuff. Smiley faces and down below and everything like you can't film me like whatever I can fit on there. <laughs> I will write so that it's truly unusable. So it's also cracked me up when people like I remember there some a publicist sent me a press clip at one point that was, you know, and we did see Jenny's body and da, da, da. I'm like, no, you didn't. Like it's actually impossible. <laughs> You've never seen it. Nobody's ever seen it. Before we talk about Dolly Parton, oh. I do have to ask about your skin because everyone's gonna freak out if I don't. <laughs> Now, Ginny, because we... all I do is moisturize my skin. Uh, okay, we need to talk about that. So, also, Ginny is an alien. <laughs> I think we should just preface this. She doesn't have pores. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the Nashville I a water. Little more as I get older. Tiny bit. Your face is made of porcelain. So, just let's <laughs> let's just preface that. What do you put on your face? God bless you. It looks unreal. Um, you know what? I'm. I Benton, think isn't her skin I'm wild? It's no. crazy. Y'all are very kind. I'm lucky. Not really. We I'm, know no, we're I'm, not. <laughs> we're awful people. I'm, I am lucky. I have my, like my grandmothers, both are people, one my late grandmother, one my 98-year-old um, grandmother, are women who were and are stopped on the street about their skin. Mm. Like, and my grandmother, who just turned 98 the other day, Aww. told me when I was little that, um, she said, don't touch your skin. Just don't touch it. Don't pop things. Don't touch it. Don't overwash it. Don't just leave it alone. And so I do feel like, though I do a ton to it now, what I do is I try to like nourish it. Yes. I don't like mess with it. See, that's key because I was at war. You remember with my skin for so long, you're squeezing, you're popping, you're yeah, leaving you scars. No, no. You're just putting drying lotions on. Yeah, just leave it alone. And I never overwash it. By the way, I slept in my makeup for like, the first 20 years yes, of wearing makeup, yes, which is I now I find foul. But at the time, <laughs> uh, I was just lazy and listening to my grandmother. because I was like, Well, well now said, I just found out it. that half your makeup is expired. Well, I, so. who, it has expiration dates. <laughs> it's, and on everything, there's like this little picture of a jar and a number of months it can be open. I, I had just no learned idea. that makeup expires. See, so Wit was just asking me. So we just went through this. I found out everything in my house was seriously expired. So that oh, was very fun. I've been putting moldy makeup. eyeliner into my and eyeballs too, for the too. past 20 years. I had like 10-year-old like stinky lipsticks. But so now I take a permanent marker and I write the date. Everything says 820 because it was in <laughs> August of 2020 that I've now opened everything. And then you can put some in the refrigerator. See, I didn't know I that. put my creams in the refrigerator. Oh. Right, Benton? Isn't it that your face lotions? Yes, but that doesn't make it last any longer. Could you make that oh. any louder? I didn't you make this. Do you think I built this? <laughs> 
is it just that like your skin tightens because it's colder? It's like, just yeah, it just it like shocks your skin, so okay. it gets deeper into your skin, oh. things like that. Oh, but but my cream, like don't deeper. you make me put the Tata Harper in the fridge? Oh, I don't make you do anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's just, it doesn't make it last any longer. It's just the cooling effect makes the product work better. Benton's mad because he gave me a birthday present. I haven't opened it yet. Truly. Oh, you, should, you should open my birthday present. <laughs> I am downstairs. going to downstairs, but I'm so awkward about opening presents. No, but by the way, mine's not like, it's 2020 and I, I'm sort of honoring like the craziness of the world. I didn't do anything fancy. Did you get me a vaccine? <laughs> <What is laughs> that would be amazing. Uh, the I made you something. Best gift I've ever gotten besides your lemon marmalade. Uh, well, you've got more of that. That you, bag. that you that you made me from the lemons <laughs> yeah. on my tree. But I've got better one downstairs. And uh, the, the first pair of real shoes that I ever got were from <gasps> Ginny. Oh, I love those shoes. I remember those shoes from Barney's. On my birthday. Barney's was I my was Tiffany's. probably 26. Yeah. And I only wore clothes from Buffalo Exchange oh. and like flea markets. And well, that's where I was before the interventions. Yes, yes. But I would wear like... Um, uh, Velcro sneakers oh, yeah. and crazy stuff because I thought it would save time. You That's still how do that. Okay, I don't need your <laughs> lip, Benton. How dare you? But now they're like you. I don't you. need these two Tennessee people to, uh, uniting against me. Tennessee. Um, but uh, and you and Dory bought me a pair of like Mew Mew black oh, yeah. flats, yeah. and I wore them truly every day for like seven years. Do you remember the ones that I wore yes. that had holes in them and I kept taking them to... Jenny, when Jenny first started getting successful, she was like, we we had to get her to stop wearing like Aldo clogs uh -huh. and we had to like, we're like, you're a sex symbol uh -huh. well, now, you're a movie no. star. This is ridiculous. <laughs> like you can't wear Dickies overalls anymore oh, God. to premieres. <laughs> to, to, God, Jenny, some of the premieres. Jenny would premiere wear like out. bell bottom, like oh. moo moos. You were always in moo moos and like capes for some reason. It was like a total disaster. I kept like, she had a shirt that had like an owl on it, like a, like oh. on the shoulder. We were like, you can't, you're a star. You can't and do things this. things with holes. Lots like of bad onesies. Holes, not cool holes. Lots of onesies. Yes. Was there was so easy. Remember the pink onesie? You had like oh, a baby yeah. pink onesie. And, well, the ba well, it was a pink sweater that went over the gray onesie. Right, but right. it was like a large sweater that would wrap around and it. And then she would wear these like Crocs, like fa like fancy oh. flat Crocs, like moccasins. You had a lot of moccasins. Oh my God, I loved the moccasins. I know. And then where am I going with this? Oh, my shoes that had the holes in them when I started so getting Jenny fancy started stuff. getting money and started working and we're like, okay, you're a star. You are you can buy things now, which is actually so funny because I remember the first time you went and bought a necklace with hearts on it, you drove away from the store and your business manager went, oh, turn around. Yep, 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 <laughs> Stuart. He was like, did you need to go shopping at Barney's? <laughs> can you go return that? And she went, I just bought this necklace. Now I have to go return it. No, and I remember that heart necklace was amazing. I still have it. I remember. It's broken, but I still have yeah, it. And someday I'll get it repaired. But also I remember saying things, I've said things to Stuart in the past, like, but I, but you know, but the stylist told me that I needed it for such and such. And his answer is, is the stylist helping you pay for it? <laughs> See, this is why Britney Spears is on a conservatorship because of the, these type of decisions. And so Ginny went and bought her first nice pair of shoes. They were baby pink yes. with little Chloe. bows on them. Chloe. Chloe, our favorite. And she was wearing them and they kept falling apart and she kept getting them resold. And I remember being like, as a broke person, like if you buy expensive shoes, shouldn't you, shouldn't they stay? Like, why do you have to resold? That was the thing that made me so angry. Yeah, and I was like, and I would get them repainted. Them? They couldn't even dye them. They had to paint them and then the paint would crack. And I was going to this fancy place to get them done in Beverly Hills. And I remember asking the guy about it and he said, you wear these outside? And I was like, well, yes. And he goes, you just wear these to impress your friends when they come over. No, but he was like, these are inside shoes. Yeah, and I was like, I wear these to go on walks. They were like house like, slippers. Yeah. And she would go hiking in them. I would wear it because I refuse. That, but I still well, like... Because once you like bought me, like, these. I'm wearing these everywhere. Because I'm the opposite of... You I got black like, too. A lot of people, yes, a lot of people, I feel like, buy nice things or we're actresses and we're gifted these nice things and they don't... They like... I mean, they take better care of them. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but my whole thing is like, if I have it, I'm going to wear it to death. That's right. Oh, yeah. No, I'm aware. I was, going, <laughs> I was literally going through photos of us because I was like, had this whole plan to like show you a bunch of photos from oh, our past, God. but I was too afraid to upload them because I didn't want them to go on the cloud. Fair enough. Because I have so many weird no, nudes. Yeah, in my cloud. So I just didn't <laughs> want to um, do that. And I was like looking through all these photos of us and there's like, mul I was getting confused because we were wearing the same outfits so many consecutive New Year's Eve. Oh, yeah, that you can't even tell. I couldn't tell what the difference years. between 2006 and 2007. We wore the same clothes yes. all the time. Yes, we did. Like we had our dresses, our flats, and you had really long hair that was parted in the middle. I know. I'm trying. I'm working on it. That was so wild. I want my hair long again. Okay, 
so what are you putting on your skin? Oh, um, I mean, like literally, you want L- me to like, like literally? Oh wow. Oh yeah, there'll right. be riots if we don't say. Um, I first of all, I really am one of those people who's like, you better be in sunscreen. It makes my kids, ha- my kids yes. hate it yep. so much. But I like, there's just no reason to go outside if you're not wearing sunscreen. Which one do you wear? Um, right now, I'm okay. So I really like. This, uh, there's a dermatologist on the East Coast I have never met, hmm. have never worked with, and I love his products because when I was postpartum with Hugo, I my skin, I feel like I've only had like relatable normal skin issues right. during and right after pregnancy. Right. So my skin did not like me being pregnant. Just like right. I had problems with me being pregnant, my skin had problems with me. I was not a happy pregnant person. Yeah. Um, love the kids. <laughs> Just the pregnant part that I, the then postpartum part that I struggled with. Um, Were you sad after? I was, but my sadness was not like I did not have postpartum depression. Yeah. So I can't relate to that. Um, I had major, I like just identity issues. Yeah. Like, like self esteem issues based on I don't know who I am when I look in the mirror because mm. it was it was like it, it was a I gained so much weight during both of my pregnancies, um, and it wasn't it wasn't even fun it was like compulsive but also because I always had um I was like someone who had morning sickness all the time but Mm -hmm. I wasn't throwing up so I felt like it was worse I just always felt sick and then I just ate because when I would eat I didn't feel sick Uh. so I gained an enormous amount of weight didn't know like I couldn't recognize myself kind of weight and that made me it just, I just felt horrible about myself. Mm. No one else made me feel horrible about myself. And like m- my husband is like he he would have been fine making out with me at at any weight. Like does nothing but make me feel like a million bucks. But I know he's obsessed with you. It's gross. No, but <laughs> but it's my own thing. And I'm like I have to feel. We all have to just feel good about ourselves. Um. So and I had really big issues with all of the changes that my body went through then afterwards mm. and the realization that like I couldn't. I don't know. I felt out of control for the first time in my life of like every like my body's always been a choice. Whatever state my body has been in has always been a choice. Mm. And suddenly I felt like this wasn't this was out of my hands. Mm. Um, So I also think I remember this happening with um, our friends and you where when you after you had your baby and after Dory had her baby, I remember going, oh, leave them alone. They're really busy. Right. And I talked to Georgia and I was like, I was like going through a hard time because I was like, well, I haven't seen Ginny and Dory because they're, you know, they both just had kids and they're really busy. And she's like, you haven't seen them? And I was like, well, no, I mean, they just had kids. They're probably like exhausted. And she was like, you have to go see them. They need to see adults. Oh, yeah. So new moms. Yeah. They're just dealing with this little slug yeah. that they can't communicate with. And all of a sudden, you're like not around like friends and you're not getting like socializing with girlfriends. Oh, yeah. Because I thought I was like leaving you guys alone. Oh, yeah. No, and everybody does. And like yeah. because it is because it's mayhem. It's yeah. Cra- it's We're like, I don't want to add to her plate. I don't want to like put more pressure than she already has. But I remember um, like one of the I mean, I could cry thinking about it and she probably doesn't think it was any kind of big deal. But when I had Hugo and I was in the hospital, Dory showed up at the hospital like the next day. And because we already had a kid at home, I wasn't letting Josh stay with me at the mm. hospital. I was like, you have to go home and be with Oliver. Yeah. I will be fine. I've got 400 nurses. And Dory showed up at the hospital and she had snuck in jars of Moscow mules. Which, by the <laughs> way, I'm categorically, I'm on like medication. Like I'm not allowed to be drinking. And she was like, let's get drunk. And the best. it was She's like, the best. I mean, I could cry because it was so, it was everything I needed, which is just like, we're still us. You know, yeah. I'm like we'll get through You're this. You're still you, yes. But Even you probably though- want to forget your you for a minute, so I'm going to help facilitate that. And and this thing that now makes all your decisions for you. Well, that's the thing too. It's like so. Not only was I looking in the mirror and I didn't recognize myself, but I also. And I feel like I aged very quickly. And I'd always been like, aging in Hollywood. Like, it's such a, like, that phrase, it's a, you know, I felt like that was like a... Cliche. A, yes, and also like about the, the generation older than us. Mm-hmm. But all of the sudden... All of a sudden, I was feeling it all at once, and I felt the, I, like, mourned. I would cry. I felt like I was mourning the loss of my career because all of a sudden, I had to say to my reps endlessly, no, no, no. I was going to say, I was going to say the girl that passes on everything. No, but no, I mean, God bless. Like, I'm so lucky. But I've had to, like, all of my decisions are based on now staying home with my kids. Mm. And then there's all kinds of things. As you know, I have, like, my laundry list of things that, like, have to, my, or my checklist of things that have to be met mm-hmm. for me to take a job. Yeah. But it is all about my children Mm -hmm. because I am going to be home with them and I am not going to work long hours and they are not being pulled out of school and all of these things. So 
Um, but skin wise, I so when I was postpartum with Hugo, I felt like I was trying all kinds of different things, and I spent a fortune and just had everything everything was just being shipped to Canada and I was trying to like I was like fix my skin fix my skin fix my skin and I got really into this doctor's line he's named Dr. Colbert do you know him? He's on the East Coast. Stephen Colbert. Is <laughs> That'd be amazing. Dermatologist. He's my dermatologist. That's the only dermatologist he just I think I don't Vaseline, know. Vaseline, right? That's what I'm supposed <laughs> to be putting on my skin. <laughs> no, Bye. Colbert causes laugh lines. He's the opposite of a dermatologist. So he, his line, and it was just one of those things where I was trying a million different things, and you know, there were, I don't know, some actress girlfriend in New York who like mm. went and saw this dermatologist, and and so I started using his products, and I swear my skin cleared up immediately, wow. and so I am kind of obsessed with his stuff mm -hmm. and someday I'll you know see him when he's on the like he knows I want to see him if he's ever on the west coast yeah um but I think his products are genius but I do I moisturize a lot, a lot. like a couple now. times a day oh yeah with what I mean well with his stuff so I so oh, like his moisturizer okay so like morning time oh gosh so morning time I may or may not wash my face it depends on like the time of year mm -hmm. and like how I slept and how many children Ooh. were rolling around on me okay um so I might just use water in the morning. Ooh. I know. Um, and then, uh, but apparently that's fine. Um, and <laughs> I then I this. do, I use one of, I use his serum. Uh -huh. And then I'll use his day cream. And then I'll do some of his oil, but only in certain places. And the eyes? Yeah. And like, like here. Yeah, yeah. Because I find that like, I do get clogged pores if I do it other places with everything that everybody says doesn't clog. It'll happen. So yeah. like, just avoid it. Clog your quote pores. No, but something happens. Right, right. Something happens. <laughs> and then I'll put on sunscreen. Okay. Through his, because he's part of this group called the New York Dermatology Group. So yes. they have a sunscreen. So I just put on that sunscreen because I'm like, well, it must all work together. Yeah, that's right. Oh, but he also has like these pads. I use all his shit because he's got Dr. like these pads. Dr. Colbert. Like, oh, I see it. Yeah, Dr. Colbert. He's hot. I use these like. Have you seen him? I mean. Oh, well, he's kind of handsome. I don't think that's him, by the way. Oh. Yeah, that's like, a different one. Oh, okay. Um, well, I'm going to him. It's Stephen. <laughs> no, I'm Stephen kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's Colbert MD? Yes. That's yeah. it, right? There's silver, the silver bottles. Oh, yeah. Okay. And there's also like toning pads yeah, and like I facial see. pads. I use all of it. Protect day lotion. Good I packaging. Use all of it. Okay. Okay. And then at night, I do wash my face no matter what at night okay. now. Okay. With his stuff. And then I'll do like night cream and I all I've used La Mer since I was like in my 20s I remember that they, yes. the La Mer people I would go to the counter back when we didn't buy online and they would always tell me that I should not be buying La Mer um and that it wasn't for my skin type but it's the only and I was also really young and it's the only thing that has like kept my eyes moist for some reason Do I've you always use the been eye dry cream or just the original now I've graduated to the like gr like the big girl stuff because I'm you know, 42. Right. Um, so now I'm on like a, the darker container. And you just like is. pat, pat, yeah. pat, right? You don't yeah. rub that one in? No. And then I use a lip mask at night. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> well, my lips Which get dry. one? What, the, the Lumiere one? What was the brand? Yeah, Laneige. not that one. Laneige? Wait, what's the one that, no, it's another one. Pink? Begins with a T. It's Japanese. Oh, Tatcha. Yes. I yes. use Tatcha, oh, nice. lip mask. I put Lamer all over my hands. Really? On the top of your hands? Yes. Are you dermal? Oh, I also will use like toner on my hands. Oh, okay. Um, These are the tricks that we live for on this podcast. There's this, I'm so mad. You can't get Boots brand here, right? The Boots no. British. Oh, right, right, right. If anyone's listening, I will. English people, I we can send, send you some. An, a, what do you need? A, I will send a thank you to anyone who can get, there's this, okay, so it sounds so gross, but it's so, I use it every day. You're probably, by the way, Categorically not supposed to use this every day. Boots makes this cracked heel balm. <laughs> cracked heel balm. Let's get it. I there is nothing better. I am sure that you're just supposed to use this for cracked heels. <laughs> I just use it for foot cream. I just put it on my butthole. <laughs> and I use it all the time. <laughs> There's probably a limit to how much you're supposed to use it. Like it's a ther it's like supposed to be therapeutic. I use it like foot cream because I think it is un. Do you put socks on over it? Yeah. I love foot cream with socks. Oh, and bed socks. Yeah. Oh, oh so this the is what I say. Now that I can darn socks, <laughs> don't throw out your bed socks. Will you explain what darn socks is? Okay. Well, I have it. So you've probably read it, right, in any piece of literature. Right. But, like someone was darning socks. Again, I told you, we have nothing in common. I do, <laughs> Jenny's bookshelf uh, is full of vintage Shakespeare books. Oh, yeah, actually, and literally. And she just, like, will just, like, <laughs> I'll come over and she'll just be, like, reading, like, you know, a doll's house, like a vintage, so like, Ibsen play. But and Shakespeare, I'm like, like iambic pentameter is really good for, like, the kids can do it. Yeah, I don't know what she's um, even saying. I've had to go see her in Shakespeare plays. I've had to go to Williamstown to watch her do oh all this gosh, literacy you drove, shit. Oh, you drove so far. I did drive to 
Williamstown. I make you do my stuff for the library. Where even was Williamstown? Berkshire's. The Berkshire's of Massachusetts. In Massachusetts, we drove to watch Ginny be brilliant in a play. That was so fun. Ginny is literate as fuck. No. I got to show you a video that Oliver made. We had to do this project for school that was supposed to be about his culture. <laughs> and what they really wanted was ancestry, us to make a video about ancestry. I could not get him interested, which broke my heart because I'm obsessed with our ancestry. Um, and But when I was talking to him about what culture is, I included language. And so he goes, oh, let's do Spanish. And I was like, <laughs> well, honey, we don't speak a word of Spanish, though I love that we speak English. And he said, oh, let's film our library. <gasps> That's full of English. And I was so happy that I didn't correct him. Aww. And I told the teachers, I was like, sorry, but we did our own thing. No, but. And I'll show you the video after of that he made that he was so proud showing off the books in our library and like our and like the dictionaries and stuff because we and I, you know, work with the um, L.A. Public Library and um Anyways, and he loves all of that, but uh, especially he's my bookworm. But um, no, wait, how did we start talking about this. We were talking about this. Well, I am big pentameter. Uh, I am big pentameter. Reading oh, darning socks. Books, socks. Because <laughs> everybody in classic literature darns socks. And now, okay, so you know, Ginny is take, an Amish woman. Uh, uh, and I have a butter churn now. What? <laughs> <laughs> we need to get you a cotton gin. Yeah. Too. Uh, <laughs> so what is darning socks? Is when you sew up a hole. Okay, so that's the thing. <laughs> if you okay, have you ever taken a sweater? I maybe promise a nice I'm going to get Ginny on Instagram. <laughs> I could be like home at 101. Um, Have you ever taken like a nice sweater to the dry cleaner and they say like, you have a hole in this. Would you like us to send it to a darner? No. You don't talk to Benton? Me directly, do you? <laughs> ben, when you take your sweaters, do that. Now you just send them to me. Okay, so darning is shockingly easy. As I took an um, online Zoom course recently oh. um, at seven in the morning in you. my pajamas, um, and it's basically patching, so it's not sewing up. It's patching oh. knit, but. The idea is you either want it to contrast significantly for like expressive artistic reasons right. or you want it to blend in completely with the knit of what has been torn. Because if you sew up knit, it's going to change how it pulls and you're going to always be able to tell. Yeah. But if you, it's sort of like inserting a puzzle piece of knit. Yes. Okay. Ginny's a sweater surgeon now. So I've we need a vaccine. a sweater <laughs> surgeon. Why did we start talking about this? Because you're darning now. I know, but how did we start talking about darning? Because there's something else we were talking about, like skin and... Um, you're talking about putting your stuff on your feet and putting socks Oh, the socks. On. Okay, so bed socks. So I <laughs> sleep like a granny. Um, and I, because I like, like my favorite place to buy nightgowns. You know Vermont Country no, Store? No, her... Go to Vermont Country Store right night, now. Her nightgowns <laughs> look like, um, <laughs> look like what zombies in horror movies wear, like in haunted houses. Oh, they probably, like, Google <laughs> like, this. Like look. on The Exorcist, like, it's like a sweat, I, I, let me guess, it's a, it's a <laughs> nightgown that has like a lace turtleneck. Well, those are amazing in the winter. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but you want, no, but I, Especially like like the flannel with like apples and hearts all over. What is it? Vermont? Vermont Country Store has the best and like house like like if you want like a like a house coat like. A Hold house on, coat. yeah, Ginny fully has like um, a little house on the prairie. Uh, uh, full. So look at their nightgowns. These. Hold on. Why are you looking at Vermont? I don't want Vermont. Hold though. on. This is, oh, Vermont Country Store? I feel like oh, yeah. you wear apple butter to bed. Look at their uh, at website. Nightgowns. Vermont yes. Country Store. Yes. Nightgowns. Now go to nightgowns. Oh, God. Jenny, these are creepy. No, go to nightgowns. These are what, like, <laughs> women got murdered in in, like, <laughs> in the Civil <laughs> no, War. No, no, nightgowns. No. Curtains? Or, curtains no, and nightgowns no, no, look no. the same. Should <laughs> I just go, go to, to like, curtains? Look, women? <laughs> Nightgown. Yeah. It's a true gown. All right, so now... Okay, oh. so I sleep in these. Okay. And long johns. You don't bully her. You under... sleep in three-piece suits. <laughs> I, I, I dress like Annie Hall to go to sleep. Yeah, you go to you sleep looking like RuPaul. All the time, by the way? Ginny used to wear ties all oh gosh, the time. All the I time. loved it. Even on red carpets. I'm sure my publicist was like, that was also prior Google to having Google Jennifer a, Goodwin tie. That was like prior to having a style. Ginny well. used to wear a white Oxford shirt with a black tie. I was tie. like, well, it looks dressed up. She was like Marcel Marceau. It looks dressed up. She looked like a Cheesecake Factory hostess. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're a celebrity. Oh, look at that nightgown. Okay, that Ginny, oh. this one? Yeah. Look okay, this no, is I'll a- I'll my favorite. This is a full turtleneck. No, that, that's not really the one I wear. This is, a, is that a Snuggie? I'll show you my Or a Slanket? Like, there's like some of them are like flannel, like this kind of thing. I would wear. Ginny, these look haunted. Um, these look yeah, like. <laughs> oh, I have this one. Benton, have you seen these? I have this one. Will you come? Oh, Ginny, you can. I love that one so much. Oh my god. So, and I'll wear that with like. At least you don't have to worry about getting pregnant again. 
<laughs> no, he really, I, it's a challenge there's for him. There's something hot about there's, it. No, it's, there's a challenge. He likes having to find me under all the layers. I'll wear like these long john, like I wear these like wool long john pants and then I wear like, I like cashmere bed socks. But that, I can darn them now. So yes. I put on the foot cream and then I put on the bed socks. But if I wear holes in them now, I can darn them. Don't have to throw them out any longer. Could we be more different? <laughs> Could oh, we do? I do hope you're not. hand washing that. Shit. Can you believe this is my something won't even be broken? When he's like, get another one. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> like I do. Mend. I do like the doing it in a different color. Oh yeah, like um, like Raggedy Ann. Or yeah, something. like the one I showed you too. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. She had a pair of brown socks with like pink stitching yeah. where the hole. Yeah, you make the yeah. It's you know? fun because you can really be like more expressive. Can you this. believe we're friends? <laughs> A lot. My favorite thing to knit, though, by the way, is like like speaking of, is I also mm-hmm. love like a good co- like a hot water bottle cozy. <laughs> like this is how I sleep. Josh has to get past the hot water bottle, <laughs> the granny nightgown buttoned up here, the long johns, the bed socks. <laughs> It's like a game. Oh, you're so wet. Find no, it. That, Find it. You're so wet. No, that's just my <laughs> my old timey Civil War medicine <laughs> plastic. That too. My whoopee that cushion too. that's full of water, that's like those it. old ones. Oh yeah. That are, <laughs> oh yeah. That's what whoopee cushion. Do you not use a hot water bottle? I don't. Oh, no. So I do heating pads. Hmm. I don't know. You stay warm for so long, you could sleep with them. You don't have to like worry about burning the house down. Mm-hmm. They're so comfy. It's like yeah. a cat on you or something. <laughs> Put them on my feet at night. <laughs> the kids have them. <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. talking about Dolly Parton. Oh, yay! So I watched Heartstrings this weekend. <gasps> you did? It made me cry. Aww, it feels good. It made me cry. I, I, ca- I cannot believe it made me cry. <gasps> uh, it, there's so few things that like you don't see the twist coming or you right? don't see the heartbreak coming or you don't, you know, it was just like, I, I, I guess I just um, wasn't expecting to get so emotional <laughs> <laughs> about it. But it is Dolly Parton's show based on her song. Yes, absolutely. Every song is the, every song is based on, I mean, sorry, not every, every song. Episode every episode is based, based on, on a different song's mm-hmm. narrative. Yeah. She's a very, she's very much a storyteller. Mm-hmm. And so it lends itself to TV episodes, but, and then ours was the first. So Kathleen Turner and I did the first. And- <gasps> I'm so you know that Kathleen her. Turner, the first time I ever saw him, her was at Williamstown. Yeah, totally. When I saw your play and I saw her in the lobby and I almost fainted. And by I was the like, way, it's Virginia Woolf! No, she, I also, like, I mean, I'm... She's brilliant. I, She's brilliant. But I let me ask you something. jump in front of a bus for You're her. obviously Jennifer Goodwin, but watching her, those scenes where she was like in the courtroom with the bones and stuff, <gasps> was it ever, was there ever a moment where you're just like, that's fucking Kathleen Turner? She... I, I mean, you work like, with such famous people, but there's something right? about her. no. By the way, I mean, she's she's half of why I did it. It was, I mean, I was sent the you know the breakdown of the of the offer, and it was Dolly Parton and Kathleen Turner. Yeah, like, well, I yeah. I don't even have to. Read I'll be this. there, and I will yes. be nude. Yeah, <laughs> no, you can see me naked. Right? All my clauses go out the window. Right. No, and and. I mean, by the way, I do believe like Kathleen Turner is now friend for life, which, as we know, does not happen on many a set. Yeah. You don't just like make a friend for life from a set. No. Um, like she comes to town and like I, like we go on dates. And then when she li- is back in New York where she lives and Josh has to be there for Manifest, I'm like, you call Kathleen, you take her out, you take her flowers. <laughs> I feel like she's just a, a beacon of infinite wisdom. A hundred percent. And she's just like, she's also, by the way, like. I don't know. She's like this warm magnet. Like, I just want to be around her. I but she love also terrifies me. I was scared of her before I got to know her, for uh-huh. sure. Like, the first time we met, I think, it must have been she the first time we met. She was also easily the biggest sex symbol when I was growing up. Uh, like, my 100%. brother had posters of her on his 100%. wall. So but She's also, like, an award-winning. Yes. Like, critically acclaimed. War of the Roses is, I mean, film still the maybe my favorite movie. She's, oh. So, the first time I met her was at the read-through. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, it was at the read through. I mean, truth be told, I had met her at Williamstown a yeah. million years before, but I didn't count that because I don't know. We didn't like it was just like a in passing, someone introduced us at a party. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me. So she Jenny has COVID. I have COVID. Um, I've, you're the only person I've seen in six months. That's we have COVID. <laughs> Worth it. I have been. You are my bubble break. Um, you are 100% my bubble break. Well, we, by the way, also, this is how close friends Jenny and I are. She kind of tried to reschedule this, and I said no. <laughs> And I so appreciated it, and I needed to get out of the house because I was like, I, I realized I was having severe separation anxiety. Yes. Because other than going to the doctor, by the way, with my children, mm-hmm. I haven't been away from my children 
for any period of time in six months. Wow. And, uh, and, and by the way, never never looked happier. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you can leave at any time. This is going weird. I'm done. <laughs> I said, right? I'm like, no, please, keep can me you here. please leave? No, but it was really interesting to realize, too, like, oh, I need to get out of the house. Like, and we have said no to everything yeah. because of, you know, also, as you know, as Whitney knows, like, you know, local family that's super high risk and things like this. So mm. we've just been like, we are going to be res- we are responsible for other people. But Whitney goes above and beyond with all the protocols. And so we felt safe with me doing it. But also I was like, fe- I haven't been around another human being. I know. It's so weird. And we and it's this is I this is uh, there's maybe two people in my life that were close enough to do this. She's like, ah, oh, maybe we should do this next week. Like I felt and I felt it, too. Like I've almost rescheduled every thing that I'm doing because I start panicking like at the last minute sure. and just being like oh let's do it later and I was like I've got to brush my hair I know she was like I don't know I have to brush my teeth and like <laughs> yeah, I have to, yeah, I have to yeah. take off my yeah. my Crip Keeper pajamas yeah. and it's just me <laughs> and she was like should we do it next week and I was like no we're keeping it and I was like great I was like this is my birthday present but I felt real relief after after we went th- I realized too I think and I'm sorry to have put you through that no can I but tell I was you glad that we then did because I realized then like oh I'm relieved that I'm going no but I loved it because to me it was like it means so much to me when I can be authentic around somebody and our relationship means so much to me. The fact that I just went, no, let's keep it. Or like, no. And even Josh said, like he said- And I didn't feel scared. I didn't feel a pit in my stomach. I didn't think you were going to be mad at me. Yeah, I didn't no. think it was going to make no. things awkward. It wasn't was, going to be a thing. Yeah, I was like, no, you're my birthday present. You're coming. But I think too, it saved it from me like being resentful this morning that I hadn't said something. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like because we had the full-blown discussion about it. Yes. Then coming here was like a delight instead of me still going through that this morning, getting yes. dressed and going like, why didn't I say something? Yes, and, yes, 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 Which yes. is something Josh actually said to me days ago wisely. It was like, you're going to resent this if you don't have right. a conversation with her about right. this. Like, it's just going to then... Feel- I knew how much of a hassle this was for you, and I made you do it anyway. <laughs> but then it was like, well, I have to do it. So good. And now I'm excited to go. <laughs> but now, that it, I've, now I feel like I've been heard and I've been seen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I literally was like, just bring the kids. We'll throw them in the pool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're staying home. They're She's like, I don't have child care. And I was like, I don't care. I didn't have child care when I was a kid. I turned out fine. <laughs> this is true. This is true. I was like, just this leave, is why we're doing leave stand-up. them with an iPad. This is why we're doing stand-up. <laughs> um, oh, Kathleen. So Kathleen, I'm sorry. I get off on such like tangents. That's what a podcast um, is. It's just oh, good. one oh, giant good. tangent. I feel like, because I feel like now it's talk show where I'm like, wait, I was supposed to be getting to <laughs> no. some point. Um, so she, I was scared of her. And she came up to me after the table read and she was like, what are you doing tonight? <laughs> and, what are you doing yeah, tonight? Yeah. <laughs> and I said, um, I'm going to, I'm going to go to uh, my hotel room. Googling and you? I'm gonna, yeah. And I'm going to just like <laughs> study for tomorrow. And I've got a, t- you know, I've got a costume fitting. She was like, we're going to dinner. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, I'll text you later. So she texts me later and I Google them. She's like, I need you to pick me up at such and such a time. Like, come to my house and then we're going to take because she was on the way. And she's like, and then we'll take an Uber. So can you imagine being an Uber driver and picking up Kathleen Turner? Oh, I know. I know. Like, oh, I know. my God. Oh, my God. I know. It's genius. Oh, my God. And so but here's the thing, too. Not only did the Uber driver pick us up to take us, but um, he took uh, picked us up to take us an hour and a half away. Oh, so I was like, wait, I'm going to be in the car with Kathleen Turner for an hour and a half. Like I was terrified. And it was in that hour and a half that I was like, oh, you're a di- like, this is something different where we're going to like right. bond right. and like through life we'll be like touching base with each other and like instant family. Yeah. Like she's special. And had you met Dolly Parton before this? No. Growing up in Tennessee, was it like oh, she's she's got she's it. Yeah, she's it. <laughs> um, she is everything you want her to be. She is the only icon celebrity is an insult frankly the only icon legend and star as benton would say icon legend star icon legend star who benton has a <coughs> dolly parton oh tattoo gosh, on her cap you, the text oh you sent me a picture um uh who i have consistently heard is over delivers over delivers when you meet yes her. over delivers she is dolly parton all the time and the thing that floored me the most, oh, it's so good. <laughs> that's Benton's tattoo oh, of Dolly Parton. On and his that's leg. a good Dolly era, too. <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good one. She's got a new Christmas album coming out, you know. Mm-hmm. I remember when you went to go have dinner with her. Oh, yeah. And you were like very nervous. I think I sent you all the pictures. Yes, 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 dinner, yes. Like from under the table. Was it like, um, but she's instantly like, I'm Dolly Parton and we're not going to make a big deal about it. Oh, wait, here's the thing. She knows how, she knows how to be what you want her to be. <gasps> So she knows, like, she is so, she immediately tells you the most wonderful hysterical stories that, like, feed into, yeah, what you want her to be. But then this is what 
tripped me up. This, I would ask her a question, right, about herself. Because I figured, like a lot of the major stars that I've been around, I mean, and I was raised in the South, like, you should ask them about themselves. Like, there's, That's there's, all they want to talk about. They're, they're, they're going to want to talk about themselves. <laughs> and by the way, I'm really good on a set with big stars because... You know how to make them feel like the center of attention. I'm, I'm totally fine not being the center of attention. <laughs> like, I really am. Like, one of the greatest compliments I've ever gotten was from Sam Jager, who was in Why Women Kill With Me last year. Right. And he said he knew that we were going to be friends when we got to set. And he realized that I wanted to work and go home. Mm. <laughs> and he was like, you're not looking for like, any, nope. like nope. anything nope. outside of like, let's get along. There's a job. Let's respect each other. But like, I'm going to work and I'm going to. And, and by the way, I'm going to know all of my lines before we get That's to set. Right. This is the only job where like some people, maybe 90 percent of people show up having no idea what they're doing. Or memorizing anything. Most of the time. And yeah. they get to just flirt for 40 minutes between yeah. working. Yeah. No, I, we're, we're gonna, I'm we're going to be the first person on set because I want to roll. Yeah. And by the way, this was also a Julia Roberts thing that I watched her always do this. Like, and then when you do show up and are prepared and ready to go, people are like, she's a bitch. And you're yeah. like, I, I'm literally just the only person here who's prepared. But I will also, I find like at this point, I can also have conversations with other actors, mm -hmm. like especially younger actors at this mm -hmm. point, like at like get go, I can be like, I would love it if we had a set where. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's just, I will run lines with you anytime you want, but mm -hmm. let's know those before we even get to work in the this morning. this is what you got paid to do. It's the and, least you can possibly and do. And I want to get home for dinner with my children. Mm -hmm. This is a job. No, yeah. Yeah, it's not camp. Yeah, no, 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 not it's not camp. And we're not a college. No. Nope. And we're not going to go to a dorm after this. No, our lines. I've got a life yep. that is There's way more important than this. 200 people here waiting for yeah. us to go home to their families. Well, you were asking about like, like, I mean, in other words, like balance and priorities and, and like self-knowledge. Well, it's balance. Like I, my real life is so much better than my work life. And mm. that will always come first. Ooh. My real life is, is my work life supports my real life, not the other way around. Wow. That's everything to me. It is all about me getting home. I want to I want to get home for dinner. Um, and when I was younger, I was like, that's okay. Yes, I'll stay here until mm -hmm. three in the morning because that. you're doing whatever in your trailer. And like now I'm like, hey, 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 <laughs> like, yeah. you are like, I don't know. I just have like really strong boundaries and I'm really good at expressing them. Yes, that's um, so cool. But um, but uh, and by the way, it benefits this. everybody. Boundaries benefit Everybody. Yeah. Everybody, oh my gosh. Yeah. And it makes everybody things easier wins for when everybody. You set boundaries. Everybody knows where your lines are and it makes That's it all right. so much easier. That's right. But yeah, Kathleen. So Kathleen Turner was immediately friend, like immediately. Mm -hmm. um, so I. St she stopped. Wait, what was the Dolly Parton thing that tripped you up? That's where. Oh, we're. that's what it was. It's that. It's that Dolly. Right. <laughs> thank you. It's that. So we're having. This is dinner. what it's like to hang out with us. By the way. <laughs> yeah, right. We're having dinner. This is like your only six-hour podcast. <laughs> um, we're having dinner, and uh, I would say so. Uh, you know, tell me about. Okay, here's just like start off example. As in, this was the first question that I asked her. Like break the ice example was, um, I asked her about old bones because the story that we are telling in the episode These Old Bones, which is the TV movie that then like launches the series because right. the rest are episodes and this was the TV movie. Um, and it's based on a real life woman that Dolly knew. And so the first question I asked was about Bones, the real life woman, because I thought that was might be a good icebreaker. Mm -hmm. And she answered it and then immediately said to me, have you ever known anyone like this in your oh life? Tell me about gosh. that person. And then at, so, and like kept doing that over the course of dinner, where whatever it, whatever topic we were, you know, touching upon, she would then instead like turn it around and be like well how did that make you feel i mean she was and, interested in <laughs> well, you. i was i didn't know what to do yeah <laughs> like i'm used to dealing with famous people yeah. that are clinical narcissists yes <laughs> but she's i mean it's unbelievable because it also none of it felt contrived mm. it felt so Genuine. authentic like she because then she would have follow-up questions and she would get excited about certain things that like were part of my story or, you know something about my parents or i mean that blew my mind. And I think that there's no coincidence that she's Dolly Parton. Yeah. The type of people that are actually interested in other people make the best art. Absolutely. She's really watching. She's really listening. Where did she you really guys cares? go? I don't know. It was something set up by like the movie people. But it, was, it wasn't but it like was a wild. restaurant. Like, no, can she go to restaurants? Well, it was closed for us. But, oh, they um, closed like a restaurant. Like we do. Like you that know, like we do. You know how they close restaurants for us? <laughs> like Not before because of the, the pandemic. pandemic. <laughs> um, no, but what was crazy was so it was a you know it was like people involved in the project were going and and the 
the person who takes care of Dolly had come up to me and said, I don't get like I won't get in trouble for saying this, but it had said like, hey, we're not telling anybody, but like you are Dolly's date. So like you guys are going to go sit together and da, 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 da. And I was like, what? What? <laughs> it's kind of like I'm going to be in the car with Kathleen Turner for an hour and a half. I can't. No. Um, yeah. So I was like coming, what trying to come up with questions. Like? And, like amazing. And by the way, she looks like she looks like Dolly Parton up close. Do you know what I mean? Like there's no like, I don't know. Yes. You're not like, oh, I see the strings. No, like yeah, that's I see the man Dolly the Parton. Like, and she says she is Dolly Parton. At six in the morning, if she's going to the bathroom, she's wearing six six inch heels. I mean, there are times when she oh. has like another version of her life because she also is very clear that like she has boundaries. And I was not about like, to ask about them. Does she have flip flops? Like, does no. she wear moccasins? No. Or, what does she wear to bed? No, but she knows how to be undercover. I will say without disclosing how, because yeah. I think that that was a secret. But I mean, the way that she described it to me. But um, but she. She knows, yeah, how to be Dolly Parton. And a story that she loves telling is that she went to one of, like, she said one of the biggest, like, compliments to her in her life was she went to, in West Hollywood, um, a look-alike Dolly Parton contest. <laughs> and she entered and she lost. And she said it could not have made her happier, like, watching these people that had, like, taken on her persona and that it was, like, helping them in some way and like working for them and that they did it better than she did. She like loved that. She That's lost. the greatest thing I've ever heard. Isn't that amazing? But you know, she's special. Like she's, oh, and you've seen, I've told, I told, I showed what, like my favorite Christmas card I've ever gotten. Which oh, I've got a frame. It's we'll from Dolly. Put it up. It's my favorite ever. And the, I love that the, um, it's the, a Christmas card. Like that was mailed. Yeah, to her friends. And it's the, 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 return. the return address just said, like, I think it just says Dolly Parton, at, like, Nashville. Like, it just um, says, no, it just says Dolly Parton, Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I mean, I was beside myself. <laughs> There's no address. It's yeah. just like, you know where to find me. <laughs> like, I told a mutual friend of ours that I was like, Dolly's got the new Christmas album coming out. I just bought the Holly Dolly Christmas uh, sweatshirt. And he was like, oh, Dolly's going to love that. And I was like, that's such a weird thing to get. <laughs> like, that's such a weird, like, Dolly's going to be told that I bought her, like, Dolly Parton sweatshirt. I mean, I'm just like, hey. <laughs> we never um, finished the story about ice. Oh, my gosh, you have to tell the ice story. Okay, so oh. this is just full circle. When Ginny met me, I was so crazy. I mean, I was just a mess. Like, I was just a mess. I had not been, like, parented. I didn't know how to take care of myself. I didn't know how to put myself first. I was always losing my keys. I was always losing my credit card. I was always, like, my car, like, had a boot on it. Like, my <laughs> license was expired. Like, I didn't have health insurance. Like, I was just, like, a oh mess. Oh, my gosh, you didn't have health insurance. I was just a mess. Like, Ginny is who told me savings are for emergencies. 100%. Remember that? Savings, because I would... They're even, not for purses. They are for emergencies. Like, she's like, savings are for, like, dental surgeries. Yeah, or like your cat is sick. Yeah, Or... Your savings you is not... You have to jump on a plane and go see a family member. Yeah. So even later, when I started saving money, I was like, oh my God, I saved this amount of money. I'm going to buy this purse. She's like, no, no, no. Savings are for, like, savings. dental <laughs> emergencies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is yeah. not a luxury yeah. thing. And so I was just, I was like, just such a mess, which is always something with me. And uh, I was calling them like two in the morning, like, I can't find my keys. I don't know where my, I'd like lose my car in parking lots. I'd be like, I don't remember what left. I parked next to a green truck and I can't find it. They're like, you know, cars move. You can't remember where your car is in a parking lot. Based on another car. Based on another car. Like I was just um, in the clouds and in bad relationships and the whole thing. And so one time we were emailing, I feel like I was maybe like 28 or 29. This is, I'm trying to remember what quote you had in your email at the time. Harry I believe Potter. I believe it was Holly, a Harry Potter quote. Because mm -hmm. Ginny, I kind of know where she is in her life based on the automatic sign-off quotes. Oh, it was Harry Potter for a really long she time. She had, it was Harry Potter for a long time and it was Audrey Hepburn for a long time. Yeah, Aww, yeah. yeah where you would email Ginny and you'd get like an inspirational quote in the <laughs> email. So you like think twice about canceling on her. You're like, oh, fuck. Uh, so mm -hmm. It just like shames you based on whatever email you're sending. Whatever disappointing thing you're writing. No. And... I remember she emails me and two of our other best friends and in the... <laughs> I didn't know it was going to show up. <laughs> so literally, I, I respond to the email and I'm emailing them and we're emailing about like making a plan together. And our other two friends' emails next to their name says the word ice. It was probably Dory and my sister. I think it was Dory and your sister and maybe Celine. Yeah. Maybe. And in parentheses, it said I-C-E. But then next to my email, it didn't say I-C-E. And I didn't know how to... <laughs> 
<laughs> and I didn't know. I didn't know that it would show up on anybody's email because it was just like, how it was entered in my phone. We're literally like emailing about like a trip together. So we're like, brrr, like email, 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 and then and I write says, back. Who, what's ice? I write back. I'm like, what's ice? And then it's silence. <laughs> But then there was a day that you did make ice. So I was not someone that was programmed in as an in case of emergency contact, which I learned that's what ice means. So I was just did not make. But we were like, we should be your ice. That's the thing. Oh, you were my ice. Remember when I had to go feed your cat? Oh (laughs) my gosh! I I mean I think I made like a tutorial like VHS tape or something for her. All I had to do was feed her cat. It's literally yep. all I had to do yep. was put some kibble in a bowl. Yep. You brought me a written out piece step of paper by step. with how instructions. To, how to turn on and off my alarm, which, by the way, I am one of those people who has like really basic. There's not. <laughs> it, this is not Mission Impossible. No. And it was like written out. I'm like, God, Ginny's so like neurotic. Like she wrote out like 17 steps of how to go into her house, <laughs> turn the alarm off, feed the cat, leave, reset the alarm. Uh-huh. I'm like, God, like what is so patronizing? <laughs> like, why doesn't she take me seriously? Like I can open a fucking garage door <laughs> and you're on vacation. <laughs> and then, like, so the police called and they're asking who Whitney is. <laughs> I could not figure out. But I don't know what it was. Like, it was, I think all you were saying was like, but it's Whitney. No, I was like, like I was like, please. You were like, but it's Whitney. I'm no, Whitney. I was like, it's Whitney. I'm her friend. And <laughs> like, I was like, she gave me the code. But like, you know how Ginny is. Like, Likely story. I sounded like I was robbing your house. Oh, 100%. And I couldn't remember where you were. I was like, no, she went on a trip. I think she's, fuck, she's in maybe like Arrowhead. <laughs> I remember them being like, uh... You know we have to call the police, right? I was like, don't call the police. I, I promise, I, I'm Whitney. I was like, Google me. Uh-huh. And uh, so then it took, I want to say like six or so years ago, I finally got promoted to mm-hmm. ICE, mm-hmm. which means I really made it. It yeah. means I like yeah. pulled my life together. Yeah. That I'm an in case. I'm a girl. good emergency contact, actually. I'm bad at like just normal things, but emergencies is where I shine. I feel like we've had, we've gone through good crises together. Yeah, we really have. And I was even thinking about, you know, like Dory suffered a tragic loss recently, and I loved like that I could call you, and you are exceptionally busy these days, but I could call you and be like, hey, can you be at my house in like 30 minutes? Mm-hmm. Because Dory's having a hard time and we're going to, we're going to talk to her. Yep. Yeah. And I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. It's like there's there's that this like you and Dory come before like everything. Likewise. Like you're busy until you're not. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not busy. When well, it comes suddenly to that's you the thing. Suddenly there's so much time. I remember yeah. us talking about that in terms of relationships with yeah. Dory too, about like how it's with the wrong people that we never have enough time. Well, that's it. I and mean, the right people. It's like you have. It's like time is created somehow. I'm this man is texting me and he's like, I know you're really busy. I know you're really busy. And I just had to write back. I don't have time. I make time. Yeah. So I don't do anything I don't want to do, but yeah. I d- don't like be, don't like do some weird math based on my Instagram and decide that I'm really, I am really busy, but yeah. I will make time for you. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. We have all the time in the world when it comes to the right things. Yes. It does blow my mind that like you, you are like to, I would say like to comedy, you are like what Fauci is to me with the pandemic. <laughs> you are to me with like comedy and like health in general. How wild is that? <laughs> Isn't that wild? Uh huh. But you have seen firsthand that I I did work my ass off. I mean, I am I was in therapy to think like you. So <laughs> hilarious, hilarious. So, but you saw me like starting to go to Al-Anon, starting to go to therapy. Like you yeah. saw the whole yeah. trajectory. Yeah, the whole one eighty. Yeah. Because now I'll call you to be like for for all that I was like sending you articles about hydration. Now I'll call you and be like, what am I supposed to do about this? Not wild. How, I, how can I make my life healthier in this way? And then I also turn to you these days for anything regarding comedy. And it, I don't know anything. About it this. works. Like it, you can change. I mean, this is what we talked about in the podcast last week with Andrew Huberman. Like you can change your brain. If I can, yes. If I can pull it together, anyone can. You've seen it. No, you've. I mean, the little girl's grown up, but aged backwards weirdly. But that's the health. That's the health and money, and sleeping. Yeah, and lasers. <laughs> laser and derma nice. rolling. I do like some lasers. I do derma rolling. What's derma rolling? Derma rolling. I don't know what derma rolling is, but I like lasers. I'll get like veins like that I want zapped. Zap. Kind of no, thing. I did the um, not the cool laser, the one that uh, the photo facial, which I ended up that thin. Is. It just takes like sunspots off. You okay. do not need it at all. Well, because you should be wearing sunscreen. I know. Uh, I will after this. <laughs> I don't. You know what? I I don't wear it when I'm driving. Oh no, we do it when we're driving. That's where I got. I was like, yeah. oh, you need to wear it when you go out in the sun. But driving, no, you've it's got also to driving. put sunscreen. Yeah. I wear gloves and when I hands. drive now. <gasps> 
Mm-hmm. I should do that. My my hands look very young. I'm yeah, not even, I'm really not even gonna lie. Yeah. Um. Even though someone was like, uh, uh, you. Uh, <laughs> I went to a dermatologist like this, like six years ago or something, and uh, and I went in because I, I was working on a TV show, and they told me I had under eye bags, and then I like looked tired, <gasps> and so I go to this like dermatologist, and he's like, uh, I walk in, I'm like, ah, I look tired, I don't know what to do, and I pointed to my eyes, I was like, don't I have eye bags, and he's like, your eyes are fine, but what are you gonna do about your hands? No, <laughs> I, was like, I know, I do feel like we neglect our you hands. You can put Botox in your hands. No, I know, I haven't done it yet, but I started wearing uh, gloves when I drive and sunscreen always on my hands. Oh yeah. First, I heard Joan Rivers used to do that for QVC. That tracks. Oh yeah, she would wear sunscreen. She would put Botox in her hands for QVC. Oh wow! She would be showing things. Have you you've seen that documentary piece of work, right? Oh yeah. Joan Rivers documentary is amazing. I, will see it. I love it. I never want to let you go, but I know you have a life. What time is it? Do I have to go? No, <laughs> it's, yeah, I'm not going to tell you what time no, it what is. Time is it? You're officially neglecting <laughs> your children. Oh no, what time is You're it? officially we need to call child. I'm services. on. I'm like. I'm on, letting you go right this second. I'm on. I'm on parent duty. Oh yeah, well, I'll, be, I'll be okay. Yeah, you'll be okay. And then um, what else? You're doing a TV show with one of my favorite people. On the planet oh my gosh! That hasn't come out yet. Oh yeah, but speaking, I cannot wait. Like, speaking of, you sent me that wait, pilot. Wait. Do you know this? Do you remember this? Because I, I do. Feel I was like, like okay. she has to do this. Yes, I remember reading a pilot. Uh, it was like in the beginning of the year. Who knows it. what it's going to be called when it actually comes yeah. out? You right know? now it's pivoting. Ridding, ridden, ridding. <laughs> uh, written. This is, I have Lockjaw. We've been talking so much. Um, written by one of my favorite writers on the planet who wrote on a t two TV mm -hmm. shows that I did. Mm -hmm. uh, truly the, f easily the funny per funniest person I know. She's unreal. Even no, texting. The her. funniest. Her name's Liz Astroff, by Liz the way. Liz Astroff, so love you. Oh, she has person. a book. Buy her book. She also has an amazing uh, yeah. book. Um, and, uh, and she, we used to work on a TV show together and she would, she would, she would leave during lunch and go buy clothes down the street and bring it back. And then the next day be in a shame spiral and return them. No, <laughs> no, no, just, no. She's just like the funniest. Like Jesus I'd terrible. walk by on my way home and she'd be eating like salmon in her car. Like she's I just, love it. she's just every, love her she's, so she's, she's, she came up with some of the best two broke girls episodes, um, uh, for the people that loved uh, the NBC show with the Splenda Chicken, that's Liz. People will yell at me on the street sometimes and be like, Splenda Chicken, which is very inside if you don't know what it is. But um, she makes me laugh harder than anyone. Well, this one, so I was talking to you about, this is what I want. I am uh, 42 years old and I, as we know, want to have dinner with my children mm -hmm. and I'm not leaving LA and I would like to, to be laughing, I would like to. Be, if I'm crying, I want it to be making people laugh. Yes, <laughs> yes, of, yes. I, do, I feel like I do a lot of crying to make people cry. I know. Um, and it watching aged, like every TV show and uh, every movie you were doing for the longest time, you were just like, <laughs> just like God, <laughs> this is such a stressful it's job. Just, I was like losing my voice all the time, and yeah. I went to see this um, ear, nose, and throat so specialist. I was, like, crying and fucking and crying, <laughs> <laughs> showing twenty percent of my tush. I, know. I went to see the specialist because I was losing my voice like twice a year, and he said that I had, I my body. He was like how stressful your life I was like not at all I have like the best life and he was like how much do you cry on camera and I was oh like oh that's I, I, everybody wants me to cry on camera everything I do and I'm always trying to explain to directors and writers like hey this doesn't make good acting just because I can cry on right. camera um, like we let's do something else but everybody wants me to cry and he said your body thinks that you are living through the stress that your characters <gasps> are living through and I was like exhausting this thing in my throat and it meant that like I was having bad acid issues and it was making my I was losing my voice all the time Anyways, point being, I was like, I would like to be, la I would like to, if I'm going to cry, I want it to be making people laugh. Mm -hmm. and, I, and generally, I would like to just not be crying as much. Yeah. Um, and, cool. and you, but I said, but here's the problem with it is I have to be in LA. I have to have a good schedule. I have to make a certain kind of income and the writing has to be spectacularly yeah. genius. And that's a really, 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 really tall order. And you sent me pivoting. And then by the way, I called my reps and I was like, why didn't you send me pivoting? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. I read it and I laughed out loud and I was like, this is I was it. like, does Whit need to be my presentation? <laughs> and I gave it to my husband and he read it a couple of times and laughed out loud. And then we started those talks in February and then I didn't hear anything and the pandemic hit. And I was like, oh, like, you know, the pandemic hit. So mm -hmm. like, like work is over and we'll see what happens on the flip side of crazy stress and spiraling and um over over you know work for actors during a pandemic yeah. as we cannot do it from home mm -hmm. and um and then all of the sudden weirdly i don't remember what month it was 
when I started texting you and I was like, this is so weird. Like they had been negotiating this whole time for like months and yeah. I thought that it had gone away, but I had gotten the job yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they were finishing the contract. That's the great thing about this business. Like half the time, even when you do win, they don't even tell you. Nobody told me. You can't me. even enjoy it the few times that things are going well. By the way, the Dolly Parton, so my Dolly Parton TV movie was nominated for You guys for have got to Emmy. watch this. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yay! And I didn't know. So, like, <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> like, nobody told Could me. Can someone tell me that I was nominated for an Emmy, Nobody please? told me. So I, like, sent a message to all of my reps, and I was like, hey, hey guys. Guys. Like, because I had one like, job. Yeah. Literally one job. <laughs> I'm like, we're all at home. The flowers but are not here. we got an Emmy. We got a best, best of. Best of Emmy. Um, nomination. Not Emmy. Nomination. But, um... But yeah, nobody told me. I was like, nobody told me I got the. Well, actually, yeah, I nobody. Told I know me everyone I got thinks Hollywood's so glamorous. Like we don't know half the shit that's going on half the time. <laughs> like it's just like. No, yeah, I was thinking about. I mean, how glamorous things are. There's an Emmy party that's virtual, and they were walking me through. You know, like Netflix is throwing this virtual, you know, celebration, mm -hmm. and so I was talking to people about like, yes, I would need to like do my hair and makeup, and I could just be dressed from here up and be fine. And I was like, I don't have childcare. <laughs> like. That's yeah. how glamorous it is. Just, I don't have childcare, so I cannot go. Like, I'm not going to sit there with my kids and because I don't want my kids part of things. Like, I want them part of things. Like, they come with me to sets mm -hmm. because I want them to. I'm really hardcore about. I want, and I know we need to go. Um, I, I will do this truly all day. <laughs> no, and I need to go actually. I just, take care go, of I just want you go to go see your kids so no, they I don't do. turn into comedians. I know. <laughs> well, that's the thing. They're like, she did actually abandon us. Yeah, I don't want them to. <laughs> she grow ran up. off of, with, with Whitney. <laughs> but I'm I'm hardcore with my kids about since the beginning. Um, Though we say things to them all the time, like, well, mommy and daddy have to go to work because we have to do things like pay for school in Disneyland. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but I don't want it to be something. I don't want them to think it's like a, I don't know. I don't want them to resent the thing that we have to do to support them. And I want them to right. see that we are fucking lucky because we get to do something we love for a living. Do they get to know you're in The Voice in Zootopia? Oh yeah, well now they figured it out because Oliver was getting really <laughs> That must confused. be confusing. <laughs> yeah, he was getting, and we have a doll that somebody gave us that's, I mean a Judy Hopps doll that yeah. speaks and so he would be like, mom say will you say <laughs> this and then he would like squeeze it and he was like, you sound a lot like that rabbit. Um, <laughs> it was never that I was the rabbit, it was you sound a lot like that rabbit. Um, and and by the way, never had questioned before recently the fact that we have like, you know, original like Zootopia <laughs> art on the walls, but like no other. Like original sketches. Yeah, yeah, we really do. And like no other. So he had seen Zootopia before. 400,000 times. And just suspected it was you? No, he. I'm sure, was, I'm sure there was a subconscious comfort that he found in the sound of my voice. That must have been so confusing. Oh, yeah. Hugo still doesn't understand. Okay. He talks about it like he does, but he doesn't get it. Yes. But Oliver truly is trying to, my sister's an animator, he's trying to understand animation. He understands I acted it, and then it was animated, but he also understands that I was filmed while acting it, and that some of my movements were used that he finds familiar. Um, no, it's wild. That is must be so confusing. It's so confusing. I promised him on the next movie. And when he left, his his name's in the credits because he was born during production. Everybody. Hugo's devastated. I was like, I don't know. I can't like, you know, Fix. after the fact, fix yeah. this issue. But um, I promised them they could come with me if we ever do a number two and they mm -hmm. could, you know, be part of it. But they do come to sets. Yeah. So our thing is when we're going away in the morning or when Josh is going to New York, because we always remind them, we hate being away from you. Yeah. But we are so lucky because we love our jobs and mm -hmm. if you work really really hard mm -hmm. and if you're lucky enough you will also do something that you love for mm -hmm. a job so when mommy and daddy are away from you it's because we're getting to because we're because we're blessed you too can to have someone trying to put your nipple on camera <laughs> yeah, exactly. without your permission <laughs> and you'll love every minute of it <laughs> um so but, and also because of that it's important to me that they be made to feel like when they visit us on sets that it is a celebration mm. so I generally ask like hair and makeup people like will you make my children feel fancy mm -hmm. and so like why women kill they would come to set and like get press on nails and fake mustaches oh. and you know they would like you know the catering person would like do something for them and we would get chairs set up for them at the monitor and they would um oh this is a thing all right there here's my closer <laughs> for you um they came to watch me film a scene for why women kill which did not make the show but in the scene i said all men are capable of infidelity. And I had, because of how we were editing together, 
it was almost like a montage of how we were editing, editing the scene together. I had to take line by line and just repeatedly do the one line over and over and over again. And when they felt like they got it, I would do the next line because they would have another someone like spliced in who was saying the next piece. Uh, what do you call that? Uh, it's not, not a, a montage. montage but it's it's like, like pops, quick pops. Yeah. Like, uh, like I would say one line, another actor would suddenly be in my place saying yeah. the next line. And we were all telling the same story, but it right, was all right. edited together Jump like cuts. one like little monologue, yeah. right? And it's like passing off the, yeah. you know, the lines. And so I kept saying this over and over again. And weeks later, um, he was saying, apparently, at at the time preschool, all men are capable of infidelity. <laughs> and I was very concerned about what people would think was going on at our house. But he was listening. And that is the good news. But yeah, so they sit there with their headphones at Video Village and they get all hooked up. And But I am realizing that I need to pick and choose when they come see me on set. I have a friend who, her and her kid, they play this game where she goes, uh, if you don't get in bed, I'm going to beat you. <laughs> And <laughs> it's that stuff you then hear back later. And then they start laughing. And they're like, don't beat me. And they're like, I'm going to beat you. And they like do fake nogies. They're like, don't make me beat yes. you. Yes. Like, <laughs> no. They went to school and she was like, bye, baby. And he's like, are you, don't beat me. And no, the teacher no, was like, and she was no, like, oh my no. God, this is a game we play. Wait, you want to hear the worst I heard Oliver say once is I didn't even realize this is so disgusting. <laughs> but I used to say to him, if he wasn't listening to me, do you speak English? Oh. I heard him say it to someone and oh, I just no. oh no I mean it gives oh, me anxiety no. even oh, no. like thinking oh, about no. it now oh, I no. could not believe oh, that it no. took hearing it oh, come no. out of his mouth to realize like what that what that sounded like and what he that is a gorgeous blonde hair blue oh. eye kid. <laughs> he is an Anglo-Saxon like he is he could be Nordic like oh, he my God. it was a horrible thing to watch come out of somebody's mouth yeah, so we now I said, hey, buddy, uh, um, we actually can't say that ever again. And mommy will never <laughs> say that ever again. Truly ever again. Yeah, no. Truly, you're not. I don't know why. I, I don't know why I said it, like where I you're got it. Like, <gasps> it was horrible. <laughs> but thank goodness it happened like the one time and it will never happen again. Because <laughs> kids can change. You can change the rules on them. And now that is something we never say. <laughs> nope. We are allowed to be flex. Yep. I'm gonna make you do this again. I'm sure for I'm my birthday. Can we do this every year for yes, my birthday? I love it. Happy birthday! <laughs> you have to open your present, which is so not big. But How long have we been friends? Twenty years almost. Truly, because you because we became friends. Like, I mean, it was right after I you was moved 21. Here and I moved here in yeah, I was maybe 22, and I'm turning 30. It was 2003. Yeah, because it was right because Dory and I both moved here from New York the same week. Oh, we that's were friends right. in New York. That's right. We that's weren't right. best friends, that's but right. we had just we were new friends that's in New York. Right. That's right. And separately moved here right. together the same week. That's right. And then we Remember when we made up really... fake names for each other? Oh my god. Do you remember what yours was? No. Dottie. Oh, I love that. <laughs> no, I do remember that. I love being Dottie. I was Blanche, I think. Yeah, what was she? Uh Goldie maybe. I mean, we were basically the, we were golden, the golden girls. girls. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You were Dottie. We like mm -hmm. had different names for each other mm -hmm. until very recently. Cuz we were in the <laughs> <laughs> but we were old ladies. That's we were because we, we were old ladies. You got it. So I'm early. You, Vermont Country Store. <laughs> Vermont Country it's Store. Change your Maybe life. they'll buy ads on the podcast. You know what else they have? They oh, have God. bloomers. <laughs> Sometimes a bloomer is a really nice thing to have on under a summer dress. No, okay. <laughs> They're have really you comfy. Ever, I mean, bridges of Madison County over They're here. They're comfy. I mean, I don't know. I can did. You, I did actually. Can get you a believe turner. this is my best friend? I was going to bring you pickles too. I've started pickling. <laughs> <laughs> of course you have. <laughs> but I'm I'm really into like food preserving. But okay, good. Yeah. I need you to teach me how to be a wife. You know what? In an apocalypse, I think I'd have us covered. Can you pickle my face? I mean, that's what we, right. That's the, that's, that's what, what we're all trying we're to doing. do. <laughs> that's all I'm trying to do. And we could probably just do like some vinegar. I mean, that's what it does. Doesn't doesn't well, that Yeah, no, that's what's pickling. Vinegar, is the vinegar. Right? But it's also, vinegar. but I hate to tell you this: the sugar, like counterintuitively, the sugar is what's preserving. Oh, that's a well. good point. There's a lot of sugar. You do kraut? I mean, the sugar. No, because it takes forever. Oh, it's a different okay. kind of thing. Like I can do like a marmalade in two days, mm -hmm. but um, and like a jam in the morning. But would she not be the biggest influencer of all time if she did this on Instagram? Yeah, you would. You'd have a stronghold. <laughs> I mean, Show she would be a legend, icon, and star. And I mogul, teach everyone how to frankly. darn. Don't you think? She have you ever seen legend. the Pioneer Woman 
on Instagram? No. Do you know the Pioneer know. Woman? Yeah, we know her. We know the Pioneer Woman. I really just want to live in the country, obviously. I know, but we got to get you an Instagram feed. People did make a lot of fun of me on, because I, okay, here's Tennessee the thing too. Tennessee homesick blues. That, like, realize, truly. Do you realize that this, so this Liz Astroff pilot that I'm doing? Yeah. Um, I realized one day it's the first, well, it's one of the only jobs where I'm not wearing like a corset or girdle yes. and like, like, yes. like actual stockings and high heels and things. But the reason I was thinking about this is because you don't I have like almost, wooden teeth. Yeah, I, I almost <laughs> only do period work. That's right. And so I get teased too then on sets because I'll be sitting like knitting a sweater in my period stuff. You know, and yeah. I'm like, keep the cell phones away. Even when you do COVID. a modern movie that takes place now, like he's just not that into you, you're like dressed as Pippi Longstocking Hilarious. from the 20s. Yeah. <laughs> you're in I like, like a costume. Yeah. But I was like, oh my gosh, in this show, I'm going to actually be in like sneakers and workout clothes. And I am not so going to... So weird. I'm not going to know what... I told her the other day, I'm not going to know what to do about the fact that I am that I can go to the restroom. Like I can go to the loo Without whenever I want. Without having to dismantle Because so much... Set. Yeah, my work life is kind of... Like the amount of water I drink is dictated by my costumes. You've always always been in such crazy costumes. I looked, I actually IMDB'd myself the other day to look because I was like, no, it can't be. I must have done something modern. But even like, you know, in Once Upon a Time, I was, my modern look yes. was 60s. Yes. And I mean, I didn't have to wear a corset for that stuff, but um, for the modern stuff and that, but it was still like, supposed to be like timeless purity. But I almost have exclusively done mm -hmm. like 70s and before like a lot of 60s and 50s and 40s right and, just wearing like, and usually in a wig and i'm usually just like old corsets and crazy with leprosy and like and pointy bras and yes yeah. so it's so weird to be like i'm gonna be in sneakers you just get to i can just you. drink water <laughs> it's so like acting's fun that's crazy. so much more comfortable it's gonna be a lot my days are gonna be a lot shorter Yes, Liz will make sure of yeah. it. Yeah, but I still sit on the set and like, yeah, so I'll be like knitting a sweater and yeah, someone came around to me on a project recently and they they taught me what the, the term on brand meant. <laughs> I think I had made people like meringues and I was and very, on brand. very on brand and it's I was like, very I don't on, know what that It's means. very on brand for me to keep you for three hours. So <laughs> I'm going to... And I promise my husband I have to go take a I'm going to shut my appointment. horror, our husband. Yeah. Our he husband will, has, he has a, a problem, doctor's he can call me. He can call me if he has a problem. Oh, he will. Um, the, I mean, he'll call you anyway. I really want to post uh, the photos from a friend of ours wedding where we got drunk and he had a basket on his head. And do you remember this? You were breastfeeding. Yeah, I, think, I was not drunk, oh, yeah, but I right. was in a barn and that's pumping right. <laughs> because it was the first time I'd ever been away from my son. This is a friend of mine's wedding. We were in Upstate New Hudson, York. New York. God, and Ginny was, was breast pumping in on a, the plane in a barn, which is, during which is, the by wedding. The way, Very on brand. So on brand. Oh my <laughs> <laughs> to be breast pumping in a dress in a barn and near a bunch plane, of pumpkins. On the plane I was doing it. I remember that. And oh. then Josh and I got really drunk and he put a basket on his head and kept, this is so stupid, and then <laughs> No one's gonna think this is funny. I was just like dead in the bed, and you guys were laughing. You were like peeing. So like your two pants. in the morning, yeah. and he put a basket on his head, and he would take it That's off. That's right. Go, and he would go. How did you get in here? <laughs> I was. I am not loud, and I had just oh. got breast implants, and I and I was afraid my boobs. <laughs> we were, were gonna, both having a boob were wedding. Well, I know that you, was such a boob wedding. You were wedding. breastfeeding. I was leaking silicone, oh. and I was so afraid. We were that both he, leaking. We were hiding in that bar and doing like half remember, the wedding. I was so afraid. I was like, "You're gonna burst my boobs." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "Y'all are a little bit funny together." God, the best. Yeah, I, he has to come on here. Oh, he'd love it. I don't think he's done a podcast and he loves, he listens to, that's all he listens to. He does. To I know he's a big part of the reason why I started a podcast because I was oh like, my gosh. listen to these? He's it's like all, religiously. He doesn't listen to music. He listens to, to podcasts. podcasts. I know. Mm -hmm. So, because I was like, you know. He loves learning about people. I know. Well, because here's the thing. I think guys did podcasts first. They were the first out of the gate because they were just born with more confidence. Guys are like, who wouldn't want to hear me talk for three hours? Oh, funny. And I was very like, who would want to hear me talk for three hours? I have to make it perfect and I have to like write it all. And, you know, and then I was just like, you know, what? I'm just going to do what the boys do. I love it. Just, that's what the, I love they it. They just go where the money is. I and I'm just going to pretend I have the confidence and just do I do it. love your podcast. I have listened to some of them. They're I, the only podcast I've heard. <laughs> and he made me listen to the, we were talking about the Ellen, he walked in the other day and he was like, he put his phone down in front of me. He was like, you are listening to Ellen Pompeo right now on, <laughs> on Dash uh, Shepherd. Jack Shepard. He was like, because you are going to relate and you are going to idolize her. Yes. And I, I like got a message to her. Yes. It's a great way to just emotional. like pilfer wisdom from other people while you're running errands and driving around. Yeah. Like, why would, I mean, or parenting. Yes, or parenting or something, or just <laughs> like, you know, um, I feel like I just listen to the TED Talk podcast constantly. I listen to Sam Harris. Oh, like, I I just, oh he's gotten way into Sam, Sam Harris. Sam Harris is amazing. Oh, he's in Georgia. Yeah, I get yeah. all my news from Joe Rogan. 
We're just going to weigh into John Oliver. That's not a podcast. Yeah, but no, but I think he has a uh, a podcast version. Oh, I got to tell Josh. He'll freak. Yes. I'm sure Josh knows. Yes, Josh. He's got an online life. I don't know what it is. I know. You're just a Luddite that's kept in the basement. I'm making you. I end these very awkwardly, too. Josh will tell you. You what? I end these very awkwardly. Oh, really? Yeah. There's nothing to plug except you. if you're an Emmy voter, obviously <laughs> vote for Ginny and Dolly Parton. We do get lots yes. of like industry people. Nice. I love you more than anything in the I world. I love you. I'll mean it. Love you, love you. Mean mean it. it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you next uh, year on September 4th, my birthday. I mean, I hope I'm going to see you like. Oh, before then, I know. Like but, week, but, but you guys will see her again <laughs> yeah. in yeah. a year. Done. I love you. I love I'm you. I'm going to open my present. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's by the way, it really is like pandemic like I feel weird during the pandemic giving people presents.